What's up, guys? This is Talks of Strength, episode six. I'm here, uh, myself, Imar Kerskus, and my friend Mason Miller. Uh, good evening, Mason. And today, for this New Year's Eve, we have a special guest, uh, Elisha Long. Introduce yourself, brother. It's great to have you here. Yeah, man. What's up? Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, yeah. pumped to talk to you guys. You guys have been oh, good. in the group for a while. This is where we met, and uh, yeah, I'm pumped. Let's get it. Man, me too. Me too. So if you could tell our listeners something about yourself and about the group, because we've mentioned this group before, uh, like quite a bit, but never really gone into depth about what it actually is. And uh, yeah, it's where we all came together. And that's where Mason and me found each other. And we started this uh, podcast from that. And um, I've never really, we've never really mentioned you before a lot, uh, just a couple of times. So um, yeah, uh, who are you, Elisha? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so to start, um, I'm just a guy, man, no one's special. I, I started making some YouTube videos several years ago. Uh, my first video was actually after a bodybuilding competition that I did, and I placed sixth place. And if I got fifth place, I would have went on to become, uh, like I could have qualified for being a professional. Mm -hmm. So so I was really, you know, kind of like, devastating and I was introspective taking a look at what I could have done differently what I did wrong what I needed to do to improve so I was like let me just jump on camera and start talking about this and that was my very first video I kind of talked about why I didn't think I deserved to win and what I could do better so from there you know I, I think one guy commented he saw the video out of the blue and he was like hey man thanks for making this and I was nervous I was so <laughs> nervous bro like yeah. being in front of a camera the first time it's just absolutely nerve wracking and because it's not normal, you know, it is, but I just yeah. kept making videos. I realized that some guys were benefiting from what I had to say. And that mm. gave, that was the first time in a while that I had this joy, like, like a deep feeling of joy that came from just giving some advice that had helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, when I was around 19, my parents died and this was my whole world got shaken up turned upside down. I had to move out. I'm the oldest out of six kids and all of us split up. So it was, it was this time in my life where, man, I, I got pretty down in the dumps. Yep. And I, after a while, you know, I was like, I can't keep living like this, dude. I can't keep mm -hmm. just staying in bed till 12 and, and uh, not eating right and just moping <laughs> around. I'm a man, you know, I got to make something of my life. I remember it was, I came across Marcus Aurelius his book Meditations. Yeah. And that book really snapped. It snapped me into place, man. Anyway, that, that's a little bit of the backstory. Uh, eventually, I just wanted to share that advice with people. So I made the YouTube channel. And eventually, I ended up making the High Through Most Men's group. And the goal with the group was to unite men. I really think there's something powerful when you unite men, just like we're doing here, you know, just like what you guys are doing. It's our responsibility that as we become stronger individuals, that we share that strength with other people, that we give hope to other people and, you know, we connect people together. So, yeah, that's what the High Thumos group is about. It's a men's group. I believe there's immense power coming together, sharing ideas, lifting each other up, getting in shape. And, yeah, you guys, you guys started Talks of Strength from that, which is amazing. Yeah, it's like a child of the, of the High Thumos Discord. And uh, you, yeah. what you're saying, Elisha, it reminds me of this quote. Uh, it goes like this. Real masculinity is not dominating the weak. It's empowering the weak. And I truly believe that. Uh, what you're saying of that joy you felt when you started making videos and you got these responses of people that were vibing with it and learning from it. I mean, that's just real fulfillment. Yeah, absolutely, man. There was That quote's really nice. It reminds me of this study they did with primates and uh -huh. you've heard the word alpha like alpha male everyone was yeah, all yeah, obsessed yeah. about the alpha male like a couple of years ago right it was now it's kind of cringy to talk about or a sigma male you know you're a sigma or a shrimp yeah, yeah. um, anyway <laughs> yeah, there's a study man like yeah ligma <laughs> what's ligma <Mark>? <laughs> no common <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah but so so they took these they were studying the apes right and they realized that the alpha male of the group was, was not the one that was the most dominating and the one that got in all the fights and 
got all the females, you know, all the bitches. No, he was the one that like was the most giving, like mm. the actual the most the, the primate that gave the most and supported the group and was willing to like here share his food and stuff and give to the weaker ones, like to actually go and lend a hand to the weaker guys when they were getting in in a fight. And so that was really fascinating because to to be helpful, you actually got to be strong. You know, you have to have not just physically strong, but you got to have some some uh a foundation to yourself to help other people. And how do you think that uh, that ties into the concept two most? Because you said it like the title of the group is the High Two Most Discord. And I think it might be good to explain a little bit what that is and how that ties into what you're saying right now. Yeah, so Thumos is a Greek word. And I'm actually saying it, the way that I say it, a lot of Greeks would say that I'm saying it wrong. I believe it's Thymos. Oh yeah. But I just say thumos. <laughs> mm-hmm. So but but what it means is spiritedness. The word means spiritedness. And I I like this because I think there's a lack of spiritedness. Not only that I saw in myself growing up and just in the mm-hmm. modern world, but I saw yeah. in other men. Yep. I used to have a group called Monk Mode where it was all about Focus, discipline, like just building a set of habits and being super disciplined. But what I realized came out of that is just this improvement that was not really going anywhere. And there was this lack Mm -hmm. of spiritedness in the group. And as time went on, I kind of, I I just, I I like this. I started saying hi Thumos in the beginning of every video and it kind of stuck, you know, it was just like a tagline, but it's more of a, it's a blessing. It's like, I, hi Thumos, hi Thumos brother, like high spirits. Like, I, I hope you have high spirits. It, and yeah. I, I just ran with it. And I was like, why not? Let's just name the group this. But that's what it's about, man. Bringing that spiritedness back to the individual, to the group, and uh, living a lifestyle that is high thumos. So, Matt, I love that concept so much. And it struck such a chord with me the first time you introduced that concept on your YouTube channel. Uh, because I was busy with self-improvement and training and MMA lifting BJJ for years at that point, but I was always missing a sort of balance with like the the richness of life. Like that was kind of like a cold improvement thing that I was doing, but the Tumos thing really combined it with sort of a warm feeling of like an enthusiastic, yeah. the enthusiastic side of me. To combine those two together, that's what Tumos is about uh, for me. And um, I even like, when Absolutely, I started like man. a little, uh, personal training business. I put it in my logo, uh, the actual Greek word tumos. Nobody knew what it fucking was, but I knew what it was, you know, and uh, it's just been a, such a like a little, I don't know, a word to shape some feelings I've had. So it's a powerful word. Talk but about, Mason, uh, talk about yeah. your chain a little bit too. Sorry, the chain, oh yeah. <laughs> because I've been um, so inspired by this concept, high tumos, I ordered like a tag like a little steel bar, kind of like a dog tag. Yeah, I posted that and day. it's like, okay. it has high tumos engraved. And um, I just, I guess I will wear it sometimes, you know, but I wore it today and it just it makes me feel good. This whole idea makes me feel good. Ideas are powerful, you know, and if you have to write once, I, I don't know, it can help. When we were also discussing yeah, so- that, uh, like I have the, a cross and it's always like, it's a permanent reminder. Like you can write, you know, a saying down or a quote in your journal or whatever. And you can really mm-hmm. like contemplate it when you're looking at it or when you're writing it. But then you go on throughout your day and you forget what you wrote down or it's hard to remember, you know, in, in, in moments of like just everyday life, you have this cross or you have this high thumos thing on and it's always on you. You feel it on you. And it's all, it's a constant reminder of what that means to you. And it, it can drive you and it can motivate you and it can re- it can remind you of a lot of different things. What is that called? Isn't that called like a talisman? Like something that reminds you or yep. like gives you a, like a talisman, something like that. Yep, yep. And you know, religion is very powerful. When are you guys going to start selling them? <laughs> Toss the strength up. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good it's idea. Rich. Who knows? We should make that into a business. Uh, um, anyway, um, I wanted to, um, Mason, uh, you were in the monk mode group as well back in the days, right? Yeah. And now it's transitioned over. And uh, do you sort of 
recognize what Elisha was saying back in the day about the difference between the monk mode group that he used to have uh, compared with this uh, yeah, different uh, approach? Yeah, 100%. I felt I didn't really resonate with the monk mode group. I obviously supported it and was a part of it, but I wasn't very active because I didn't, I, like he was saying, I didn't really like the fact that it, it was just so serious, you know, there was no, there was no like, yeah. uh, there was no, you really, like there was a community, but it was just, it was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this today. You know, it, it, it wasn't like a right. real community. It was just like, oh, I'm doing this today. I'm doing that today. It wasn't. Day 45, no fab, taking yeah, your shit. <laughs> exa yeah, exactly. Oh, right. I, I'm on no fab day five. What are you on? And then you, you say five days or I just failed. Uh, you know, that's not really building a community. That's not like bonding. You know, you don't get to know people. You don't build relationships like that. So it was kind of something that you check in on and it wasn't, I just didn't really resonate it versus like the discord in this high Thumos community. It's, it's awesome to come in here and talk to people and you really build relationships with people. Like I've built relationships with both of you versus like the other community where I didn't really do that. Yeah, bro. Let me tell you, I, I really think there's, it's a sickness in the self-improvement community to take yourself too seriously. Yeah. And you see a lot of guys that are becoming like that. But, man, life is meant to be lived. You know, it's, it's yeah. really meant to be lived. You're not here for long. You're going to die. And it's, you're not meant to just live to, and exist. I, I think that uh, I think that even stoicism these days is being pushed upon a lot. of People love the idea of stoicism. But if you look back at stoicism, it was originally like a, a belief system for the poor plebeians, like the poor class. It was for people that were suffering in poverty and had no other option. Their life was so miserable. So the only option that they had was to be stoic or they were just going to be absolutely depressed and nihilistic and probably off themselves at the end of the day. And so what I was thinking is, man, like we got to bring back the spiritedness. We got to mm. bring back that fire in the belly, the hunger and the lust for life. I actually heard this story by out from Alexander the Great. Like when he would ride into battle, he would often be like partying it was like a party with his troops and they'd be drinking and stuff and mm. they wouldn't feel shame you know shame is something that a lot of guys feel these days if they go out and drink with their their bros and they have a good time you know you know or like they're they're ashamed to maybe talk to girls or just to live life man and and i don't want other guys to feel that shame in yeah, the name I, of self-improving i completely agree you see people oh you, you see certain good habits and then people go overboard with them. It's like right. you should eat a healthy diet and then they say bread and oats are for slaves. And <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah. they yeah. go, you know, it's like there's but I know I know fib, I know a bunch of chads that eat bread and oats every day. Exactly. Great it, lives. It's also more yeah. about, like you said, it's about the enjoyment of life. If I'm going to eat oats every day and it makes me happy it makes me satisfied and i feel like it's improving myself and if it takes a year off my life so be it i enjoyed that you know that's the whole point of like you're finding that balance and then enjoyment out of it and you're right. not taking everything too serious because at the end of the day you could say fucking everything causes cancer so it's like you know there's, like there's a quote by jack london it's one of my favorites he says the function of a man is to live not exist I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I will use my time. And I love that, dude. And it, it's mm. funny because in the quote, he's like smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not saying go smoke cigarettes, but you get what I'm saying. We, we put so mm. many yeah. damn limitations on ourselves, but we're these young men and we got so much power and potential. We got to live. That's all. Young people are more susceptible to that, I feel, because it's harder to, for them to see the nuance like it's either like one thing, one belief system. Right. And oftentimes young kids, young guys, uh, I was kind of like this myself, they transition from the addiction uh, of video gaming or social media. They just transition that addiction onto self-improvement and the same obsession uh, gets implemented in self-improvement. You know, I was fucking What's that? obsessed with, with optimizing anything, every part of my diet, optimizing everything from my natural testosterone. And it, it was probably causing me more stress than benefit uh, for a large uh, amount of my youth. You know, and one other thing to yeah. remember, even the kings, the greatest kings in the medieval times, they had the Joker in their court to make yes. fun of them. You know, it's that nuance. It's to part of becoming more mature. To keep them from getting too serious. Exactly. Yeah, to keep them from...
There's a like Fight Club. You remember the quote? He says, uh, "Self improvement is masturbation." Yeah. <laughs> I I realize that improving alone, self improvement really becomes selfish improvement, because you're. What are you improving for? We got to stop and ask where where the hell is this going? Like, what are we moving towards? And I really believe that the best way to improve in the first place is to surround yourself with a group of, of, of people. There's a book called Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And there's a quote that he says, poverty, I realized, wasn't just lack of resources. It was lack, uh, it, w- it was isolation from people who could help mm. you make you more of yourself. Like they could help you be more. It's isolation from those people. And more than ever, what I'm seeing, guys, is like this isolation. Men don't really have those those close friends. They can't have these deep talks like we're having now. And so you feel isolated. You feel weird and alone. And that's no way to uh, it's no way to grow. I also One American, saw this. Uh, I also ahead, I also saw this. I was reading a book the other day on loneliness. And you know when you go into that monk mode type of mentality, and you know you hear all these people, they're like, ah, oh, you know, you got to go at it alone. You got to you. You know, it, it's. I was reading this book on loneliness, and loneliness has the same impact on mortality as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, make it even same. more da- or, uh, dangerous than obesity. So mm. it's like that's like, it's a very overstated Damn. part of. Uh, yeah, this that's is like crazy, si- this it? is like scientifically proven. So imagine if you smoke on top of that, you're smoking yeah. like 30 <laughs> cigs a day. Equivalent. Yeah, and you're, al- and you're alone, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, two you're, you're going to be dead in no time. But uh, yeah. it says like 75 million millennials ages 23 to 37 are lone, like are lonely. Like they have a sense of loneliness. So it's like, that's a huge portion of people from just that age group, 75 million people that are lonely. And you realize how deadly it is, and it's a very overlooked part of self-improvement because every time you hear someone talk about the journey of self-improvement or whatever, they're always telling you to go at it alone or – and I, yeah. I was listening to this thing the other day, and it's this – uh, it was an interview, and he was like, you're almost better to go and drink like alcohol with your buddies – and like be around bad company, but have that social connection, then you are to like be alone and be like, you know, stay alone for a long period of time. So it's like, it just shows you how important the, uh, how important, you know, the social connection is that we, and it's even more important, you know, this is great to be online and talk to people, but it's, it's even more vital to like, look people in the fucking eyes and have a real conversation with someone. It's like, you look at most people nowadays, they can't even look people in the eyes. They're looking at the ground, you know, that all this small talk, you know, there's no connection anymore. You know, m- most people don't even know their neighbors. Most people don't even know people around them. Like we're striving. You got so many, you got so many young guys and they think they got autism, man. And they're really just yeah. like, just so in their head, well, you know, they haven't, they haven't talked to anyone and realized, oh, I'm actually normal and other people have these thoughts. Dude, I, the sad part I, is, is that the, the harder uh, the longer you stay away from social contact, the more you isolate, the harder it is to get, it is to get back into it. It feels bigger. It feels scarier. More anxiety. And then you just, yeah, you just get dragged into it some days when you go to, I don't know, you visit some old friends or something and you realize, hey, man, all right, it's not as scary as I thought. And then you feel way better. Well, it's like, so, and then after that, you feel so much better. Like you want to go out and like the next day you're like, hey, you guys want to hang out again? Like you, you want mm. to like, once you get that social connection, you all, you want more of it. You're happy. And what I realized was like when I'm in school, a, a lot of, like I live alone. So a lot of the times I'm doing work in at my house and I'm working a lot. But over the last couple of weeks, you know, I've had a lot of social connection almost every day, you know, for long periods of time. And it's like all these all those little thoughts that used to come in my head that I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I thinking that? Like completely erased. I don't have those thoughts anymore. And it wasn't because I changed my diet. It wasn't because I went to the gym or anything. It was because I just upped my social interactions with people. I was talking to people more. I was going out laughing, you know, having fun and having that social yeah. connection that everyone, like, it's like, what is everyone, cra- I mean, everyone craves that social connection. Like everyone wants to be acknowledged. Everyone wants it's, to. It's part of being a human. Yeah, man. Exactly. Oh, well, and then you look back into like, 
uh, back into our tribes and our ancestors, the reason why it feels so bad to be lonely is because if you were lonely, you were like shunned from the tribe. Mm. So yeah. if, if, if you were lonely, it was because you did something bad and you, know, you weren't gonna be accepted again. If you were lonely back then, you were most likely gonna die because you didn't have that tribe. You didn't have you know, the people protecting you. You didn't have all aspects of it. So now you, know, you, have, that, you have that ancestral feeling of, oh, I'm alone, you know, I'm gonna die. You, know, you get all this anxiety and all this stuff. So it riles up those feelings of what someone would have felt if they were lonely back then. I know this American commentator, he said there's a, uh, in the last 50 years, I think there's been a real decline in the, in the third space, the so-called third space. So you have the first space is, I believe, um, your home family, like yourself, your direct uh, family, maybe you have kids, maybe you have a wife or something like that, or parents, maybe if you still live with your parents. Then there's work, that's the second space. And then the third space would be like going to church or something like that, or having a sort of neighborhood group or a friend group, a gentleman's club. Like you don't see that type of stuff nowadays anymore, uh, except for maybe guys that go to the gym or, you know, BJJ. But there's a real yeah. decline in general in America, like that third space. People are not going to church Smart. anymore or a lot less. Smart. I, yes. I like to, the way that I see this, bro, I love that you brought this up, mm. but... You said in the last 50 years, we've had less of this. In my eyes, we've become more, you could say, even godless as a society. We've become further away from God. And yep. what that means to me, there is a, uh, there's a verse in the Bible. Mm. It's in Matthew, I believe. And it says, when two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. I love that verse, man. It's, it's mm. so powerful to me. Because when we yep. gather like this... God is there, and God is love, and we need love because love is hope, man, and that's mm. what people need. People need hope. They need something to latch on to. They need something to give them hope for the days ahead because things are getting hard. And, and as we become more of a godless society, we become more isolated. Just look at how we were in the last year, man. Six feet apart. Don't, t yeah. don't look at each other. Don't get close to each other. Eat your food in a bubble. If you go to a restaurant, eat your food in a bubble. Right mm -hmm. it, now, more than ever, we have guys online playing video games. It, we have we have everyone isolated in distance, and we're becoming more godless. And there's not this deep love and connection that we need, man. And so, just yes, like I'm, you said, those thirds, the you know, the church, the 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 gym, the BJJ, whatever it is, like it's immensely powerful. There's a lack of meaning, and you know Nietzsche said it. Uh, a lot longer ago than 50 years ago yeah that was just kind of a, yeah. a too quick statement but he said you know god is dead and people are filling it up with uh you know a baseless self-improvement or maybe hedonism is the other direction of self-improvement is is trying to fill that hole up with uh something yeah. ultimately unfulfilling and we have to realize that self approve just general self-improvement without meaning is also ultimately unfulfilling so what do you think he meant by God is dead? Because I know a lot of atheists will take that phrase and use it. All right. Well, I'm not like some sort of Sam Harris. Uh, well, I, I just want to hear but, your opinion. Uh, I but I do opinion. think, yeah, that's, that's a good question. God is dead for me is that people just take it less seriously. They, they have forgotten the benefits of having a belief in something. Like nowadays, that's uh, more become like a joke when someone really believes in something and has faith in an idea or if it's God or Islam or something like that. People have read so many scientific studies and we have so much access to news that um, we forget uh, the whole idea of believing in, in a bigger thing or a unity or uh, a God has lost its charm. It's, uh, it's no longer as necessary because you have so many things that fill it up superficially that's my opinion. That's I think how that came about yeah. since the since the you know since the invention of the printing press. You have more information to fill that space up, and you don't feel like you need like you need it, and uh, you lose the. What are the, what are the consequences uh, though of getting rid of that? Like, what is the consequence of getting rid of God? Well, well, you also God provides structure, and yeah. the idea of a religion. Look. I'm not a Christian, but I really like the uh, the faith system and uh, this, the text and the wisdom and the idea sure. 
uh, and uh, so I have this like little chain that says hi Tumos and I believe in I'm I'm definitely a spiritual guy and uh, so I fill it in in my own type of way you know and I believe lacking that it just makes you more hopeless and it you, the, like I said it's structure it fills in a structure and if you don't have a structure it's much easier to get carried away by other ideas uh, it's much easier to sort of feel like everything's hopeless so I might just succumb to hedonism or uh, you know it's easier to become obsessed with things I feel religion and faith helps to let go and just trust in the process um, so these are just some examples that I feel uh, come from having a lack of faith it also it also results in people like lacking the ability of like having beliefs like you see a bunch of people just wandering around but before when you'd believe in god or you whatever religion you believed in that was like your core thing you know you go to you go to church on sunday you you prayed every morning and every night you would pray before every meal it gave you like a purpose it gave you like a meaning and now people just lack meaning people lack purpose so now they're just walking around wandering around and it doesn't necessarily even have to be God, but you can replace that with something else, but you have to have a purpose and you have to have a meaning or else you just I think agree. everything's hopeless and you'll attach yourself to meaningless things that don't really matter. Guys, yeah. when you hit a heavy yeah. fucking squat, that for me, yeah. and, you, and, you, and you fist bump your bro. You see God. That's, that's God. <laughs> <laughs> you no, see but, God. <laughs> what, what fucking, what Elisha says sparkling. is so true. Like when you have that, you know, that spark, that's where two people are gathered and they, they have just their hopeful, they have that positive attitude. They feel that spark. That's, that, to me, that's God. That's, you know, the spark I've always, of existence. I, I can tell you, bro, like, I'm going to leave this conversation and I'm going to be, I'm going to be filled with a certain joy and energy that I wouldn't mm -hmm. have if I didn't do this. And, yep. and that's why I think people love Joe Rogan so much because he's he's just with other guys having fun, drinking. Yep. That's uh, for a lot of us, you know, we'll have poker night or something with the boys. And then the next day you wake up and you're like, yeah, yeah, let's go. You know, you're feeling good. And so mm -hmm. you, it's like it gets you going, man. It, it makes you feel like you're not alone. But last thing I'll, I'll have to say with the God is dead is is exactly like you two said. It it, it killed the – the uh, it got rid of the glue. It got rid of the glue that held us together. And you see it in, in the United States. It's on our money. One nation under God. It's, it's that thing that held us together as a society. Wow. Wow. It, if, you, if you think about it, I think this is from uh, uh, the book Sapiens or something. And he was talking about religion, what it really first was. It was when a tribe, you know, thousands of years ago, a tribe would meet your tribe, and you guys would kill each other because you believe different things. But if you believe the same thing, then you could unite people over distance. Mm. And so that's what religion really was. It was, hey, we believe the same thing. Let's help each other out. Let's share. Let's do good to one another. Love thy neighbor. And, and you know, let's support each other. And <laughs> that's what it really was. It was like an original form of government. I have something that links into that. Um, I believe that I was just thinking about this. If you read the Bible when you're young or you get lessons on it, uh, yeah. aside from the actual contents of believing in Jesus Christ and God, and um, it also introduces a bunch of philosophical ideas that helps you think in that way. And if you lack those ideas or you're not, you don't have any sort of religion growing up, maybe, um, yeah, I think that might result in if a whole population has that, then there's just an increase in cynicism and nihilism because there's some fundamental yes. philosophical development that's not there. Because it, like, look, I can read Bible verses with great pleasure because I understand the philosophy behind it. And to me, it's logical. It, it gives me a great feeling because the philosophical lessons yes, are so rich. And if stories, you're growing up and you stories, never have that... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, if, I was just finishing up. If, you, if you're growing up and you've never had that, I do feel like there's something missing because you're going to feel that up with your TikTok stories. Right, bro. That's such a good point. That's such a good point because the, the stories and, and metaphor is like a vector. Like it's like, it's something that 
it it's like uh, it transfers knowledge to you, a story. Like when you read a story, you may not know it, but you're learning because that's how we, we learn through stories, mm. right? Yeah. So like sometimes when you read a book, you'll just be like, Eureka. You know, you'll be, I'll be reading a fantasy book or fiction um, and I'll just be like, Eureka, like my problem is solved or it changes the way you interact with people. And this has been yes. studied. Like, it, like reading fiction actually gives you more empathy, uh, stuff like that. So imagine if you grow up reading the stories of the Bible like, or anything, you know, any kind of religious text. So in the Bible, we have David and Goliath. We have Daniel in the lion's den. We have the gospel yes. of Jesus. We have all these awesome stories of powerful men. Of, righteous of, archetypes. Of righteous, right, righteous men, uh, community. And so you hear that as a kid, and it makes you want to be righteous. And you don't even know that you're learning, but you're learning. You're learning to do good unto others. You're learning to be a man of strength and power. And so when you get a kid that maybe, maybe, and I'm not saying all, not all, not all, but some kid, they grow up without these stories, they don't have these, like, strong ideals and, and things to live by, this moral code. And so you see a lot of that nothingness these days, man. It's like this, like people growing up, they dye their hair blue and pink and they're changing their gender. And I don't want to get into that too much, but you see what I'm saying? It's like there's this, mm -hmm. there's this weird chaos going on in the world because there's a lack of, uh, there's a lack of groundedness. There's a lack of groundedness from the top. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so, Elijah, I was kind of curious. So I believe you're a raised Christian, right? So... I'm yes. just wondering how your belief has uh, developed over the years, um, where you're at right now. At one point, I heard you say that you're, I believe in one other podcast you did, I heard you say that you're not a Christian anymore, but you still appreciate it a lot. Or oh, how, where are you at right yeah. now? What, like, how is it growing in your life? Yeah, I believe in God. That's what mm. I believe in, man. I believe there's there is God, he's doing his thing. And he's taking care of whatever he needs to do. I don't know what God is. I'll never have an mm -hmm. idea, but yeah. uh, I believe that he's out there doing his thing. I I um, will reference a lot of the Bible because that's what I grew up with in yep. church every Sunday, something yep. like that. But uh, yeah, as far as believing word for word what the Bible says, no, but I do believe in God. How Has it helped you in your youth? Yes. Like, with what, like you, I, like what I said, you've been yeah. through? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think and, God, uh, believing in God, for me, believing in, in God is a very, like, like if you just want to be stoic, you know, you just believe in God because to me, God is the universe just doing its thing. I don't know what the universe is, right? Mm -hmm. I'm this little, I'm this little, uh, flesh and flesh bag on earth, <laughs> just kind of floating around and, you know, the void mm -hmm. is a, uh -huh. So what the hell am I like? So yeah, I don't know what the hell this whole thing is, and to me, that's God. Like that's that's God, man. So yeah, and I feel if like if I lose my arm today, if I lose my cat, if my you know my family member dies, I always kind of remember. There's always kind of like this knowing in my mind that everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, everything very works, everything works out. Everything works out. That's perfect, Mason. Like everything's gonna work out just fine. And my little human uh, getting complaining, like, what's the point of complaining if I don't have any control? What's the point of anger and all this other stuff? So, yeah. You know what I feel is getting more common? Uh, people take some psychedelic or some weed or they go in heavy into meditation and they get this derealization. And it's super stressful and scary and they, they overthink reality and they start to get confronted with the depths of uh, what our existence is about. And I feel yeah. like just having faith it just is what it is and having some ideas to help make sense of it at all be it in the form of christianity islam uh philosophy or just uh any other buddhism i really like buddhism um yeah that just helps let that go trust in it reassure yourself feel the warmth feel the feel the meaning and move forward from there i saw this uh yeah, i saw bro. this i saw this interview the other day and this guy went to this like African tribe that is still hunter gatherers. Like they haven't been a or, you know, brought into the modern world. You know, they're just like how our ancestors used to live. And he was asking them all these like deep questions about the, the moon and the sun and death and the universe and all this stuff. And uh, he ba like, basically they said, what, what was the most important things in life? They said, 
meat, honey, and like oh yeah, it, like yeah, I saw that yeah, too. Yeah, oh. yeah, and it's like it's a, it's funny because and he was he was talking about like what happens after death and he's like I don't really know I don't really care like that's what the guy like the hunter gatherers you know he's like they're like well what do you think about the sun and he's like oh I like the sun or you know like just yeah you I know like he's it. ba- and it's yeah. <laughs> but it it shows you that and then like they ask him about the moon he's like oh I don't like the moon because it it. Uh, it it makes the hunt worse at night, you know. It's when yeah. it's darker, it's easier to hunt. But it's like it's funny because almost m- questioning the meaning of life and questioning all these things are a modern concept mm-hmm. because we have all the basic needs taken care of. Like when you have food and when you have shelter and we have all these things, then you, you're kind of sitting back and you have all these things taken care of. So then you're like, oh, now what? Oh, well, why am I here? Why am I? Why am I doing this? Why am now you have the ability to question all these things. But originally, when we were hunter-gatherers, we didn't have the time to question. We didn't have the time because we were worried about surviving. That's, that, was our main, that was our main drive was hunting, getting food, enjoying that food, enjoying the honey, enjoying the little things, you know, and then, uh, you know, pr- uh, producing and all that different stuff. But now that we have all those things taken care of, it's a modern concept to question the meaning of life and all that different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, for most of human existence, so much. We've been, uh, we've been, um, you know, occupied with just the fight for survival. And now for the first time, we're confronted with the fight for meaning. Damn. Yeah, man. It's what were you going to say, Elijah? I, I just want to say that we're inundated by so much of this abundance. We have abundance, like Mason was saying, of, of everything. So then all we have left to do is question the meaning of life. And you find a lot of people get nihilistic and stuff. There is something to be said about uh, rejecting. If you reject pleasure, you can slowly turn, like, you can slowly get pleasure from pain and rejection. Like, think about that. Like, if you... If you can reject always seeking pleasure and and embrace struggle, eventually you will gain pleasure from struggle. And the cool thing about that is life is struggle. Uh, it, it's really, it's filled with struggles. It's filled with a lot of, like, boringness. You know, it, like, life is pretty freaking boring, dude, sometimes and mundane. Like, on a day-to-day basis, yeah. Yeah, you're life just going is through pretty the routine, goddamn yeah. boring. Yeah. Life just is pretty this damn today. boring. Mm-hmm. Go yeah, ahead. And think about it. It's it makes me a bit upset. Uh, I, I shouldn't say upset, but I just get a like kind of annoyed. Like you see people online, and they're it's almost like they're always acting like they have something going on. And you know damn well, dude, people do not ha- always have something going on. Like people are not always hyped up. People are not always doing some crazy cool things. Most life is boring. Like like on a day to day basis. But but people. We kind of, you know, we don't want to drop that mask. We don't want to drop that mask because and really confront the nothingness of what is going on. But that shoots us in the foot, though, because um, if you accept that boredom and you yes. rejoice in it almost, look, the contrast between excitement, and, like if there was only ever happiness, that'd be not exciting anymore because that's all you know. What makes things separate from each other and what makes you feel things is the contrast. And if you have a healthy balance in feeling bored and you accept that, then the excitement can feel good again. But if all you know is happiness, then there's no contrast to make you feel actually happy. Right. Well, that's why you have to, yeah, you have to appreciate both things. And going back to what Elijah said about the struggle, it's like as human beings, we're made to struggle and in today's world, in this consumeristic world that we live in, you're always trying to make yourself comfortable. Every, everything is like, everything that they're selling, everything that they're doing is to make us feel comfortable. And, you know, yeah. they're, they're coming out with softer beds. They're coming out with softer couches. Right. They're coming out with bigger TVs. They're coming out with virtual reality. It's making us more and more comfortable. And you wonder why more and more people are depressed, anxious, and all these mental illnesses are coming out. Because as humans, we are made to struggle. And in that struggle, we find happiness. And when you have that struggle, you appreciate the little things a lot more. It's like, 
it's like after a day of like struggling and fucking working your ass off, people are like, oh, I can't sleep. You know, they, they like, but after you struggle all day and you work your fucking ass off, when you lay down in bed, you're like, I love this fucking yeah. bed. I, I, I can't wait to sleep. Yeah. You know, like when you hit that, you know what I mean? It's like cold and like you put, you put the blankets over and you're just like, oh, yeah, like, you feel it's almost, it's almost orgasmic. Like how good you feel when you get into bed after a hard day. Mason oh. and Imar. Let me ask you something. Like, think about even this podcast, bro. Like, this podcast came out of boredom. Really, like, you're like, why don't we try that? Like, you, yeah. one of you was like, Let, let's, uh, it came out of boredom. It didn't come out of you, like, being super happy. It came out of boredom. Bro. And, and think about it. Every time you do an episode, it's a little bit uncomfortable. You know, it's a oh, little yeah. bit uncomfortable to turn on the camera or the, or the mic and hit record. There's a little bit of nervousness. There's a camera. That involved, how's it going to work out? <laughs> yeah, there's a camera. There's a camera on you right now. Um, Your God's filming like, you. How's it going to... How's... You're thinking, how's it going to work out? Is it going to be any good? Is anyone going to listen to it? But that's the thing, bro. That's struggle. And you need boredom. You need struggle in your life. Well, because that's where creative genius comes out of. That's bro, an, I that's believe I was thing. having a shit day. I was having a shit day. And I saw Mason's fucking video. And his video was called Run It Up. Literally. And you were there hype as fuck. Boys. With your fucking snapback. Yeah. Like, what up, guys? Run it up. And I just fucking messaged you. Let's fucking do a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and we were hyped as fuck. And we yeah. just did yeah. it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, and then it's... it's Going back to what you said. It's also about, like, the journey. Like, life is just, like... People get in this mindset of that there's some type of like ending that they're gonna be like there's this esoteric ending where they're happy and everything's gonna be like great and like that's not the reality you know people are like oh well when I build this business up and when I reach a million subscribers when I make a million dollars or I make a hundred million dollars then I'm gonna be happy and then I'm gonna be satisfied and then they reach yeah. that and they realize that that's not the reality you Start you, the point. you you never reach a point like. You can become satisfied, but you're all you always want more. And it's like the the beauty of it all, and I've heard it from multiple people. Like my dad always told me, he's like, the beauty of the like it's the beauty of the journey. And like when you're on that journey and you're struggling and when you're when the viewership's not up or when people aren't watching you, but you're still doing it anyways. That's so like that's right. the fucking that's the fun part of it. That's the journey of it. Because if you you know if you stay consistent and you fucking improve and you learn from your failures, eventually you're going to be successful. And then you can look back and you're like, holy shit! I, like you look back and you laugh on the fucking days you were only getting a hundred views or when. And I think you miss that. You'll miss that actually. Yeah, yeah. The, the innocence of it. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like, it's like wow. Like that's the fun part. You know, it's it's fun mm. to look back on you five years ago and you're like, man, dude, I was such a pussy or I look. You know, like, I was such this. And then you look at, you know, and then you're happy because of how much you've improved and you looked at the journey. And then you look three years ago, you went through a, a horrible time, but you overcame it. And it's all about the journey and the struggle and overcoming that. I want to reel it back a little bit to what Elisha was saying about the boredom. Um, I feel like today, in today's world, it's, it's hard to accept boredom and give it a place and enjoy it almost like I was feeling it today like and I struggle with this because I have a lot of things going on in my life and I like sharing it with the group uh, I have like I like posts and pictures of like in my Instagram story like oh I'm in the squat rack oh I'm doing weights and then I get home I eat I feel great trust me but I do the next day I'm working I'm on the fucking toilet I'm sitting there I'm tired as fuck or whatever um I'm not hyped for my cold shower. I'm not hyped for my coffee. I'm just sitting there. And to be in that moment fully and enjoy that, there's the mundaneness, there's nothing. That's real wisdom. And that's the birthplace of the excitement that follows. And Elisha had an excellent concept video that he came out with recently, intermittent boredom. And maybe Elisha, you can go into that a little bit more. You've yeah, now yeah. been a couple of months so a couple of months after you've uh, you've came up with that, like how has that evolved? Um, yeah, so so real quick, you know how you said those mornings where you just kind of having your cup of coffee. It, it's so easy to just pull out the phone or turn the music on and think you need to be doing something. Hmm. Man, that's like it says in the Bible, like step into my presence, like step into this present moment, this mm -hmm. this nothingness that is there. 
mm-hmm. I believe, dude, that's where that's where the genius lies. That's where the motivation lies. Because when you're bored, like boredom is a form of motivation. You be bored long enough, and you're gonna get your ass up and do something, even if that's go for a walk. If it, if you want to go to the gym, do this. Just sit your ass down and and don't do anything. You're like, all right, eventually, you know, I'm very bored right now. Let's go to the gym. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's intermittent boredom for me is just like try to push back uh, from overwhelming yourself with technology and, and all this input early in the morning. I, I like to say till like 12, you know, 12 p.m. Another thing I realized, and this is going just a little bit deeper, is if you look at entertainment and movies, average film, like what's an average film length? Like 90 minutes. Yeah, two hours. Right, so so ninety minutes, two hours, and what's your average song? Like an average song, three two and a half minutes. minutes, two and a half, three minutes. Right, so like, bro, yeah, well, I don't know. They might have different length of music where you're from, and like, you got some short ass songs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to good music, it's five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's crazy because listen, if you have Spotify, bro, like you literally have TikTok for music. You have you have two and a half minute, three minute songs, and every song that comes up is novel, right? It, and novelty requires attention. So your attention is always being strung out. You're always being pulled along that next song, that next hit. You're never actually having time to think about your own life, to get to know yourself better on a deeper level. And you're, then you, what do you do? You watch a movie, maybe one movie a day, one show a day. So for two hours, you're, are we really thinking and being philosophical when we're on a, like watching a movie? Probably not. Unless it's a really good movie that leaves you with a good story. But the thing with the movies these days is it's all, it's all a bunch of woke, you know, BS coming out. Like <laughs> it's just uh, a bunch of woke stuff. Anyway, that's, I really think there's something there, man. You got to eliminate all of the noise. You got to get to know yourself. You got to be okay being bored because that's where motivation comes from. If you're if you're lost in life, I really think, and you don't know what to do, like for money, for for your future, start working out and start being a bit bored. That's like really helpful. Like, go on walks in the morning and don't listen to anything. Just be bored and see what comes into your mind. Dude, that's it's, great that's, advice. It's so satisfying to like go for a walk or sit outside and like leave your phone inside and have like a cup of coffee or you know a cigarette a cigar or something and like you're just it like it like it brings you into the present moment and you're just sitting there and it's like the sun's shining on you like damn dude life's fucking good and like you know you could bring a journal out there and like you're just sitting there and like relishing and like looking and like really like you're really just diving deep into yourself and you can just sit there and so many ideas and you can almost figure yourself out like I've said this so many times before when people have come to me and asked like for advice I'm like dude just sit in a fucking dark room or sit like alone with no distractions and like just plot like set an intention out before you do it and then just listen and write or listen and just and figure out what's you know what's going on because in the the reality of it is is like you know like you know yourself the best you've lived like no one else knows you better than you know you like not even your parents like you've lived your life your parents might know you your whole life they still don't know you as good as you know yourself so why are you asking all these different people what's best for you you need to go out and find out what's best for you that goes for your diet that goes for anything it's like you can go out and take information and learn and then implement those things, but you know what's best for you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't like follow someone play by play. Yeah, a lot of times people amen. procrastinate by uh, actually uh, procrastinate instead of just being alone and sitting on their own thing that they know are is actually right for them at that moment. They just go on YouTube yeah. videos and watch general self improvement. Dude, Imar, the thing about that too, man, it's so damn stressful. Like if you're always having something new and novel, if you think about it, novelty stresses you out. If you go back to hunter-gatherer times, there wasn't much novel stuff. Like you're hunting with your group. Okay, we're in the forest, herpty derpty And then a fucking tiger jumps out at you, bro. You know, your cortisol shoots up. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're stressed out of your mind. 
Yep. Now it's like, shit bro, your pants. dude, dude, you shit your pants. Yeah. Now, it, so, so novelty kind of stresses you out because it requires focus. When you're wandering through the forest, you're not always on high alert. But now, whenever you watch a new video, you're alert, alert. It's like a tiger. It's not the same threat. But you get what I'm saying? It grabs at your attention. It makes novelty. you pay attention. Novelty. Exactly. Right, because you're not always, you're not always supposed to pay attention. Yes. You're supposed to be like in a in a state of mind wandering. I it's, just had a yeah. I just had a realization about that. So novelty, like you said, it grabs your attention, and that basically covers up what was going on. Keep talking. Keep it's talking. Gone, bro. I'm gonna go take a piss. I can hear all you. Right, that's all good, Mason and the viewers, uh, listeners. Novelty it grabs your attention, so it's covering what was going on before that. Same thing with caffeine. The way caffeine works is it uh, releases adipose. Um, no, adipose is fat. Fuck, I forgot, I forgot how, uh, what, the, what the word was. But basically... Uh, it does something. No, it covers up your caffeine receptors, so to speak, uh, that make you feel uh, less tired. Like, there's uh, receptors in your brain, and it, the caffeine, when you drink caffeine, uh, it fills up those receptors. And usually when the receptors are not being filled up, you just feel the actual amount of tire, tiredness that you are supposed to feel. But when you drink caffeine, it fills up those receptors, so you don't feel it. However, the more caffeine you drink, the more receptors your body makes. And eventually, uh, you just have to keep drinking more and more and more just to cover up, and note that word cover up, how you're actually supposed to feel. Same with novelty. Trying to take away my caffeine, bro. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm fucking addicted myself, but uh, it would be good for you. But uh, but look, novelty also covers up. So two examples here. Novelty comes with novelty in the form of social media, porn, music, whatever. YouTube, it covers up how you're feeling by grabbing your attention. Caffeine covers up your actual energy by, uh, by refilling it with a fake form of energy. You know, and so constantly we're covering up a lot of our habits nowadays, or in general, and psychologists will state this as well, are coping mechanisms. And I just had this massive realization, because this is actually a big problem of mine, this whole topic, listening to music all the time, checking my phone every fucking 10 minutes, even when I'm working, right. even when I'm supposed to be doing other shit, I really struggle with this. Even though like, I have a lot of things figured out in my life, I am definitely always listening to music. I mean, you guys can see it in the Discord. You can see what I'm listening to on Spotify. I always listening to Spotify. And I think I will, it would do me good to try to slowly back away from this constant novelty. Because you're actually yeah. like covering up what is actually going on in your brain and how you're feeling. Yeah, Dude, real quick. Cool, yeah, real you're, cool. you're like, go ahead. Like Elijah, you you made a video on this a while back, like the the no music or whatever. I took like a uh, I took like a and this wasn't related to you, but you know you made a video about it. But uh, I took like a little break from music because, like you said, yeah. uh, Mr. Like or Mr. Um, you always. <laughs> Thanks. The second one was good. I, you, that for I, heard, Enjoy, I heard Elijah do it earlier. Elijah <laughs> also. Uh, <laughs> I did it. Now just leave out the oh, first part and we're going. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> for by the Kimura, you threw this fucking mic. <laughs> uh, oh, but what I was saying is, I like, I, I would always be listening to music. You know, I, I, at home, I would be listening to music while I'm working or while I'm doing stuff, while I'm working out. Then I get in my car. As I'm going to work out, I'm listening to music. As I'm going to wherever I'm listening to music, you know, I'm like constantly listening to music. And I'm like, dude, there's no way like this is like good. And, you know, also too, it's like there's only so much music. Like obviously there's a lot of right. music, but, you know, you have that select few. You know, you, you got like a playlist yeah. you listen to. And I'm like, I'm listening to so much music that I'm fucking bored of like this 200 song playlist I have because I've listened to it so yeah. many times. You're in loop mode. Exactly. And then, so I took a little break. I took like a 30 minute, uh, not a 30 minute. <laughs> took a 30 minute break. <laughs> 30 minute break. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys, back to music. Yeah, Bro, yeah. that's literally me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <I tried. laughs> back to yeah, the I same got, track. I got woke in 30 minutes. <laughs> I already listened to the song 10 times today. But fuck it, we go in another round, boys. <laughs> oh, it's so esoteric. But uh, <laughs> I took a 30-day break, and dude, when I like came back, 
the music that I like, like these songs that like were so good when I first listened to them, I got that feeling again. And I was like, like, I was almost like, what the, like, it was the same song, but it like impacted me so much differently because I hadn't heard it in so long. And I almost got that yeah. feeling of like the, when the first time I listened to that song, yeah. you know, when you listen to a song for the first time, you're like, holy shit, this is insane. Like I got that feeling Whoa. again after I took the break and didn't listen to it at all. So like, I feel Damn. like, I feel that like that's powerful. So, I feel like that's, that's how it is for a lot of different things. It's like yeah. when you're, when you're, it's like, it's like coffee, you know, like when you, I, I, I can't remember, like, you guys have probably, I mean, fuck, Elijah, you've probably been drinking coffee forever, but... Me too, uh, yeah. It's like, if you can remember back to, like, that first time you ever had coffee, and you were just like, holy shit, you know, you're yeah. smiling, yeah. you're fucking happy, like, you like, know, you're, bro, you're, it's like you just did coke, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like you just yeah. did coke. It's I like, stay up it, all night. It, yeah, it's just insane, like, you're like, fuck, I want to do this all the time. Yeah, it's literally like, you get this, like, euphoric, you're almost, it does feel like drugs, and like... Yeah, it's like imagine if you took it. It's like you take a thirty day break from it, and then you drink that piece of like cup of coffee again, and you're like, you fall in love with it all over again, and then you have that appreciation for it. It's like what we were talking about earlier about how, like the struggle and all that different stuff. It's like when you when when you go without something for a little while, and then it, you re implement it. It's like you appreciate it so much more, and you're like, "Fuck, dude!" You almost dude, get- yeah. And, and the thing is, when you do them all the time, it just makes anything that's not those things like boring. Exactly, it well, makes it work it's- boring. You always need a break. You always need to like take these weird breaks because it's like, "Oh, I, I'm so I need relief." You know, I have it's- that. I exactly. Have that. Well, and it yeah. goes back to like uh, the molecule more. It talks about how like it's not. I need to read that. Yeah. It's not even really about like the coffee that you're drinking, but it's about the experience. It's like. You, you hear a lot of people, it's like, they don't even really like to drink coffee, but it's like a routine, it's something for them to do in the morning, and they like the routine of like, you know, getting up and brewing the coffee, and yeah, then getting sm- a kick from that. Yeah, smelling yeah. the coffee, you know, having that smell, and then, then you get the experience of like drinking the coffee, and it's like, it's almost like they love that routine, and it talks about in the molecule more about how it's like, you can almost like replicate how like, it almost, you know, you can get this different experience if you go to a coffee shop. Like, you ever go to a nice coffee shop and, like, like damn, this coffee tastes so much better than the yeah, one I do at home? this is nice. Well, yeah, it's like, it's not even the coffee. The coffee fucking tastes the same as the one you have at home. It's more of just, like, oh, Mason. you're in a different environment. <laughs> no joke, bro. When I was, like, 21, I got, a, I got some internet on my, uh, this janky old laptop that I hadn't had for a while. The pink you know, one? I watched porn. <laughs> I, no, no, it was before that actually. <laughs> that was my sister's. I used to upload it to the library. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so anyway, I like, dude, I watched porn for the first time in like a year, and no joke, bro, I came in my pants without touching myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, bro, dude, no, dude, that's I just, a, I that's didn't a, have to jerk off, bro. That is a perfect bro. example. Not that I want to dive into power or anything, but it's no, like, no, dude, yeah, we don't if you can, if you, you can, know, go, if you can fucking look back to the first time you watch porn or, you know, dude, I, I was, I was like 11 years old and like, we have the Oklahoma city thunder here. And like, you know, every team has like the, yeah. the girls that, you know, you know, they got the thunder girls, you know, that dance around yeah. and they're like palm girls. I, it's probably, <laughs> it's not the same in, you know, for soccer or whatever, but like in America, we have like fucking cheerleaders. So, and they're like these hot ass girls. They try to get like hot girls. Yeah. So, I watched High School Musical. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. But, dude, I remember I got this magazine that our school handed out, and the cheerleaders were like, you know, in bikinis. Dude, I was like, ho- dude, oh. I was like, holy shit. And I'm like, now I see like a like a girl in a bikini. I'm like, yeah, what, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, kind exactly. Of We're so desensitized. Yeah, exactly. And, like, exa- and it's like the first time I ever watched fucking porn, I came in my pants too. I didn't like, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm like, what just happened? Did I pee? Or like, <laughs> dude, I was like so fucking confused. Yeah. And it's like that just shows you like how, like you were saying, Imar, about like how we're so just like, what was the word you used? Desensitized. Yeah, desensitized to just everything. And it's like, you wonder why people don't, like, appreciate the small things because we're so fucking, we're over-fucking-worked and we're over... It, it really is, bro. It, it's, I think it's the fight of our life. Like, it, it, like, it, yeah, like dude, for the younger generation, crazy. there's just too freaking much. We got we to talk about, like, the, the answer to the problem. But uh, keep going. Keep going. But it's like, it's like, I mean, um, 
Imar, you should really, uh, Imar, you should really fucking, you should really read the molecule more. It's like it's. I just downloaded it on my phone. It's, way it, it is like it is a real like how much dopamine impacts our life. Like I was watching mm. a Andrew Huberman podcast, and I talked about this in our podcast a couple of episodes ago. But this kid, he was like 19 years old, and he was going. He was in college, and he was lifting, but he was like so over overstimulated and all this stuff that like. He lost his motivation. He started failing in school. He stopped going to the gym. He started eating a bunch of shit. He like mm. felt, he, and people like thought he had ADHD. You know, they were trying to like give him all these meds. And he came to his dad, who who knew Andrew Huberman, came to him and he was like, you know, go without your phone for thirty days and go without playing video games for thirty days. And he gave up his phone and video games for thirty days. And within those thirty days. He started to make better grades. He started to get, like, he wanted to learn. He wanted to go to school again. He started going to the gym. He started, his diet, like, miraculously got better. You know, he wanted to improve. Yeah. And it just goes to show that, like, we're so fucking overstimulated and we're so, like, overworked that, like, we don't want to do anything because it's, it's, it's easier to get on your phone and watch porn or surf through Instagram and get that hit than it is to go work your ass off in the gym and get that hit. So yeah, Elisha said, "Let's let's like, talk." You'd be stupidly entertained by like anything that's in front of you. It, it, you know, if well, you can't like, be bored, you'd just be stupidly entertained. Dude, like TikTok and stuff now, like it's so like yeah. it, it has almost ruined our generation because of and yeah. it. They made like <laughs> back back when uh back when I mean they've literally curated these social media apps to be addictive. You know, like you've heard of the endless scroll. Like they do that for a reason because it's you can scroll. Like oh, yeah. you ever been on a like Instagram or TikTok and. You can literally scroll forever, and then like fifteen minutes later, you're Burn like, up thirty minutes here and yeah, there. Yeah, you're like, oh shit, it's thirty. Like it's almost like thirty minutes went by like nothing, and they do it for a reason. Oh, my sister's got. It. I'm like, delete that shit. She's no, like, I know. I'm dude, like, delete I, I, that shit. I was with my friends the other day, and I was like, ah, oh, deleted TikTok, and they were like, why? And I was like, dude, I was spending like five to six hours a day on it, and they were like, oh, let me yeah. check my screen time, and like one of my friends had like eight hours. Like, ah. like seven hours just on fucking TikTok, you know, like yeah, eight, eight hours a day on this social media app that is giving, that's bringing you nothing, that's giving you nothing. But also Oof. the the bad thing Jeez. about it too is like when you're on, like when I had TikTok, I deleted it. But when I had TikTok downloaded, you know, you'd come across a really motivational post and you'd like it and you'd be like, oh, I'll come back to that later. And you get this false sense of like, like, so, like self-improvement masturbation where you're like, Oh, well, I'm getting something out of being on this app and I'm... You get the gatherer instinct. You're like, yeah. that's why I like uh, getting groceries sometimes feel good. When you get a bunch yeah. of them, you're like, oh, I'm set up now. It's that survivor's instinct. Yeah. And then and half of them go to waste. Yeah, and especially... <laughs> and I, ne I also have the same thing on Instagram. I save all these fucking quotes, but I never look in the save folder. You're just yeah, exactly. like, you never look back on it. that illusion of, <laughs> well, of you're gathering a, you're like a hoarder. Yeah. I am. You're I have like fucking 200 stoicism quotes with pretty pictures on my phone, but I never fucking look back. Oh. All, you know, all these jujitsu techniques. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. And you know what? Um, I was going to get into this a little bit Yo, more. Yo, quick question, mother. quick question. Yo, quick way. You remember the first time you watched porn? Yeah. Yeah, I was with four... F we, it was, right. we were just doing gotta, a whole you night. You about it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll fucking talk about it. I don't give a fuck. So we were like we a whole night. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going into detail. But I'm just saying like the whole night we were with some friends. The whole night we were playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Uh, no, not Black Ops 2. I don't, some earlier one. Uh, and on the fucking four split uh, TV. You remember when you had like the TV like yeah. with a big fat ass... Uh, is split into four and you'd all play at the same time at that point we just started watching it with mul multiple friends and oh, i was God. uncomfortable as fuck when i was fucking 11 and i was like damn i was like damn videos pulled up dude it was like could, crazy i was like feel your brain you can feel your brain yeah. just heating up and like, i and felt it changing yeah. you know i was like oh yeah fuck damn all right and, and then uh man then I was uh, not innocent anymore. You know anyway. that, like, that butterfly feeling in your fucking stomach, you know, like, you get, yeah. like, dude, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking weird, like, yeah. it's like you said, like, some good shit. Like, dude, you know what's weird? The friend that introduced it, like, dude, because like, that guy's like, let's pull up the board, and he was like, guys, are you feeling it? <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's so, it's, like, we can go in depth a little bit on this, like, really quick, or I will, but it's like, this goes into, like, relationships, like, when I was in a relationship, like, I was fucking watching porn all the time. And, like, dude, I felt, I, like, I look back and I feel so fucking bad for this girl because I was so fucking, like, 
What was the word you used? De- the uh, desensitized. 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 And yeah. like, dude, she was like, she like she had she had never watched porn. She had never done it. Like, oh. she had never been exposed to that. So she was like this innocent girl, banging. and like. She was like always Meanwhile, Mason like, watching the browsers. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm in my room just fucking going crazy, you know, like fucking got big boobies all over my screen. But, uh, and I never told her this. So, like, she never fucking knew because, like, it's such a weird talk. You know, it's not a very open topic to talk about. But it's like, I felt so bad because I look back and, like, she was, like, very intimate and, like, she, like, wanted to experience these things with me and, like, you know, like, I, like, I, I was, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I want to fucking, I want to, you know, like, it w- but it was because like I was these weird positions well, with her and well, stuff. Yeah. Well, no, like even even like even like in uh even like within the relationship, like you know, she wanted like bake cookies and like and over, do bitch. all the. <laughs> You're like, let's do reverse cowgirl. <laughs> Fuck those cookies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. Well, <laughs> dude, honestly, like I like one. I like I didn't give it. Like I was like, I just want sex. Like like that. You know, because like that's what that's what I was like taught from like such a young age. It's like you know. Girl sex, girl sex, you know, like, cause like, that was the only really experience I had. So I like, I felt so fucking bad because she wanted to like do all this like stuff. But, and like, then I realized like I took a break and dude, like, I like, like, this is like fucking cliche as fuck. But like, like when I used to kiss her or whatever, like I didn't give a shit. I'm like, eh, come here. Mwah. You know, like, but then like, <laughs> then like, dude, I like, I took a break from fucking porn and shit. And then I like. Dude, I like kissed her, and then you know, like when when I could, like when I felt her, like dude, I got this like weird feeling in my body where like I was actually feeling, yeah. you know, this feeling, this thing, and it's like, I like, yeah, exactly what I, like you, mean. you know what I'm like, you get this, like I got this, like I don't even know like what the feeling feels like, but if you know, you know, like it's just, yeah. I was like, wow, like this is this feels awesome, like I love like that connection yeah. with like a girl and like you know just like that experience and that that hugging someone you know like i like hate i used to hate hugging people i'm like i fucking hate this really? you know because like yeah. i was so like i was so just uh yeah when you're yeah but when you're like t- consuming too much erotic content any like sort of like regular expressions simple expressions of love make you feel uncomfortable because all all intimacy for you is like that er- super erotic exposure or just like so orgasm just get, like orga- like it, you just want that orgasm yeah. I noticed that, yeah, like, true. when I was watching a lot of porn, like, even, like, just hugging my friends became weird because, like, all love and everything, I was just watching this erotic shit over eroticized, so it just makes you uncomfortable in other areas of my life. Bro, you but, will, like, like, you see an average girl, bro, and you're off the porn, like, dude. Oh, yeah, no, I know, it's dude. It's so good. It's like, like, I, like, right, like bro. when I haven't, when I haven't, like, like, I mean, I haven't watched fucking porn. You appreciate forever. beauty. But, yeah, you know? it's like, like you can see beauty. Yeah, it's like holy shit, she's beautiful. And my friends are like, dude, yeah. she's fucking ugly. It's like, dude, yeah, you're bro, tripping, chill. bro. You're tripping, bro. <laughs> but, yeah, and like, yeah. there's so much more than just that. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. That's the thing. It's like you, like, it's it's cliche to say, but it's like, it's you look past the looks, and it's like, like you see, there's, like, beauty is more than just the looks. Like, obviously, it's a it's a big part of it, but it's like. You know, like, when a girl can, like, make you feel a type of way, like, that's beauty, you know, that's like a, and you, like, you really begin to appreciate that, you know, when you get right. off all that other it's shit. It's not just, like, like, does she have a fat ass and yeah. titties? Check, check, yeah, it's all like, right, no, she doesn't. <laughs> like, yeah, well, it's, that, it, it's like, it's, like, it's she weird because, ass, you know, still I actually, ass, like, but. it's, like, I used to, like, just want to fuck, you know, I used to just, like, oh, I don't, right. it's, like, but now I'm, like, oh, now I actually, like, want to, like, get to know this person, like, curate an actual relationship you know, and then it's like, then the fucking intimacy that you have is just like mind blowing. You know. Let's tie this back a little bit into what we were talking about about like the TikTok and the uh, overstimulation. So my mother's a biology teacher, and one of the things she taught me is in biology there's this term called supernatural stimuli or superhuman stimuli. It's like, uh, for example, when the Maybe for uh, a frog likes other frogs with little tiny red dots on its uh, on its back. Uh, the frog will one day see a billboard with like huge di- uh, with huge red dots, and the frog will go insane because he's triggered to s- oh, be yeah. uh, stimulated by a little black dots. But then he sees this super supernatural stimuli, these huge uh, red dots on the billboard, and he falls in love with the fucking billboard, he goes insane, and he can't fall in love with natural frogs anymore. And what I learned at a young age, I learned this lesson, I believe, when I was 13, 14, 
and I understood human current human society is fucking filled with these superhuman supernatural stimuli everywhere and that's what everywhere. makes it so diff difficult to remain Mar balanced in your mindset Imar, I, I think this is great so so we've kind of pointed out and critiqued like what's wrong so now we're kind of going into what to do yeah. like strategize yeah. I um like if you go to a bar and, and you, you get something from the top shelf, it's usually like expensive, but it's nice. You know, you get a nice like whiskey, it's nice, mm. a nice scotch, you can enjoy it. But if you go on the, the lower tier stuff, yeah, like give me a beer, yeah, give me a shot. It's like, <laughs> like there's, there's low, there's bottom shelf stuff, like you're talking about that hyper stimulus, and then there's top shelf things. I think a good way to look at it is just add more of the top shelf qualities and things to your life i like to consider reading is top shelf you know yeah. like going on a walk enjoying the sun writing in your journal hanging out with friends that's all top shelf stimuli you don't want to get a lot of the bottom shelf stuff does that make sense yeah yeah that's a great one trying something new like going canoeing going to a different city uh yes. doing something that it's not necessarily right away. Your brain doesn't see it as a reward. Right. Sometimes but, it costs a little bit more. Sometimes it yeah. costs a little more energy or maybe it's a little boring. Like, bro, you say you want to go canoeing or fishing. I'm like, eh, it's kind of boring. But once I'm out there doing it, I'm like, yeah, this is it. Exactly. Doing something that you don't have a preconceived idea of, of like, oh, this is going to give me pleasure. You're just going to go find out something. Dude, that's, that's fucking, that's like a perfect way to put it. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, this morning I was like kind of tired. I'm like, dude, I really don't want to do this pod yet. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> no, yeah, like, I, I did the same thing, bro. I'm like, can we push this back? No, day? dude, that's what I was <laughs> going to be like, dude, can I find a way to like make this tomorrow? You know, like, you know, so, like, yeah. some shit. Meanwhile, I'm the only one here. I like sitting in the train and being excited watching the this video. <laughs> Imar's like, Imar's like, let's go. <laughs> but no, I know what you guys are no, saying. But, I, but I have like, it all the time. Now that yeah. I'm here and now that I'm like talking with you guys, I'm like, dude, I'm love, like, I love this shit. And it's like, yeah, I love this. It, it's like, it's like, that's how it is in so many things. It's like, you ever like, ah, like, oh, dude, I'm kind of tired. I don't want to go to the gym. And then yeah. you're there for five minutes and you're like, dude, a fuck. I, I'm, I'm so, so happy. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm so I have that with PJJ so like, much. Or it's like, there's this, uh, go ahead. Or it's like my friends invite me out and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to go out, you know? And then I go out, I'm like, I have a fucking amazing time. And I'm like, dude, I'm so good. You know, it's like, you almost have to force yourself a lot of the times. And like, going back to way back what we said, it's like, dude. You live one fucking life. Just go out, like, go out and fucking do shit. Like, even if you don't feel like it, it's like, once you actually go and do it, you probably will feel like doing like it. It's just taking yeah. that first step. It's like, it's like with this podcast. It's like, dude, if you fucking think of something, just go and do it and like stay consistent with it. it. And, you know, Jason, there's this uh, maxim, the alchemist, the alchemist had this maxim. It says in filth, it shall be found. I love that, bro. In, where you don't want to look, where you don't want to go, that's where it shall be found. The exactly. obstacles away. That's all. Yeah. Well, exa well, exactly. Yeah, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of the times people don't want to, like, search through that or, you know, they have these, they have, like, this egotistical thing. It's like, it's like when they start, like, when they're, when they're starting a brand or when they're starting a podcast or when they're starting a YouTube channel or when they're starting some type of business and they don't get results immediately, like, their ego kicks in and they're like, Oh, I feel, you know, it's like, I can't, you know, I can't do that anymore. Right. Right? I can't do that. And then, like, what you realize is like, you have to like dig deep into that filth and like lose that ego. Yes. And sometimes you have to fucking, you know, you have to fucking realize that it's not going to be all fucking sunshine and rainbows all the time. And you're going to be not. in that filth and you're going to be digging and you're going to have to fucking work your ass off. But that's like all a part of the journey. And that's what you have to go through. Yeah, Elisha, you asked what are some ways to deal with this overstimulation, and yes, yeah, so right now we said like trying trying new things, trying things like top shelf activities, things that are not necessarily short term gratifying or that you don't necessarily have an idea of in your head like oh that's gonna get, make me feel good, but it's just something new to try or something uh, that's gonna give you some knowledge, some deeper fulfillment, but. I think that intermittent boredom, like actually turning off your phone sometimes, as difficult as it is, just trying that for as it's long so as you can hard, and then, hey, and then hey, write I down for I how long do you do it. I don't do it. Oh, me neither, man. But I'm saying it like I'm just, 
I'm just philosophizing here, but how I can help myself actually, because I think we're all strong dudes here and we are struggling with this a Dude, lot. Dude, turn the fucking and phone up. Bird, <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> We well, well what, I do, what I do is like, I don't... In I don't an Oklahoma really... accent, like, turn off your fucking phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not like, I don't turn on my phone. I just like put it in like a different room. And like, sometimes like when I start my work, I forget about it. And I'm like... Eh, you know. We become a slave to these inventions, to these... It's uh, well, it's like, it, it, it is to read. It's like, it, like actually yes. reading a book is hard. Bro, like I, I'm only in page 20 of 36 of As A Man Thinketh, and we've been doing this fucking reading challenge for fucking <laughs> that's three a weeks. Short ass, that's a short-ass bro. Yeah, you can read I'm that fucked. Today. <laughs> 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 I'm struggling through it's a page like a day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's reading he's reading sins a day. Bro, and yeah. Breathe. Hicks and Gracie was my favorite guy, and we did Breathe as his challenge to read that book for that month. And I only got to halfway and I was doing a fucking jujitsu competition. So man, it's, it's yeah. difficult, but I never regret it. And every time, uh, it just makes me feel good. And I love that feeling when you read one page and an idea clicks with you and you're just like, damn. And you put down the book and you look out the window, you're like, fuck, Dude, that's what, so true. <laughs> what I have a problem with is like starting a book and then like reading a couple chapters and then like getting some esoteric knowledge out of it and then just never reading the rest of the book like i just yeah. like i just like yeah. put it down and then i'm like but that's fine that's fine too like we we are like over hard i think about finishing every book but that well, can actually I remember, I remember someone talking about that too it's like it's like you don't really need to finish every book you start it's more of just like taking what you want from the book and like if you took if you took what you want then then you got you got what you want yeah a lot Mark of these, Manson like, talks about that too. Books and a lot they of these were, business books are just a lot. They're just saying the same fucking thing. Yeah. Bro. Well, like, that's that's oh. like all self improvement is. They're saying the same shit in different ways. Yeah. That's why maybe in some sense fiction is is uh, underrated because it creates it new is. ideas just through ideas of like it's little, little stories, stories, little, little adventures. Story. Like it, it can. And that's what. Yeah. Go on, Elijah. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. No, I I just said uh, like Mason said. You know, that's most self improvement. I totally agree, mm -hmm. and that's why we need this. Like instead of us just going on and saying, do this, do this, do this. It's like, we're bros talking and yep. we're sharing stories. And like, it's hard to do that though, because there's, there's a lot of friction uh, and we're not used to it. You know, it's not, it's not every day that we come together and we talk and we can just be free and drop the ego, drop the mask. Like we know it all and just talk like bros, you know? Mm -hmm. so. It's, um, it's almost like an outlet. Well, that's what that's what a lot of like young men lack too is like that that ability to just let loose and fucking talk and tell stories and yeah, you know, everyone's so uptight and like you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't. Oh, it comes from anxiety, you know. They well, exactly. people well, are afraid to dude, show it's, it's their like, real face because like society is always watching around the corner, and they feel. You ever see a guy and you're just like, this guy's a weirdo, and then you talk to him and you're like, man, he's actually pretty cool. Dude, yeah. like, you know what's honest. funny is like everyone says that about me. So like, dude, like, <laughs> really? Yeah, I used like, to, I used to dude, that too. All my, all my best friends that I have right now, like, they used to like fucking hate me. Like, they were like, "You're a weirdo," and then like they kind of like slowly like got to know me, and they're like, "Dude, I fucking love you." Like, you know, like, and it, yeah. that's just how it is. Okay. It's like, and that's just the reality. Like, that's just human nature. Is like to Im immediately judge someone, and you know, you create this image of them. But then I know what you mean. It's like. You look at someone, and you're like, oh, that guy's a weirdo, or, you know, you like, you see him like doing some weird shit, and you're like, oh, f fucking geek, or, you know, like whatever, you know, and then like you get to, you talk yeah. to him, and you're like, damn, that dude's like actually really cool, and, and once someone opens up, man, it's almost like you give them permission, you give them permission to be themselves and to, to you know, go on a deeper level. Like a lot of people are smart and they have these crazy ideas, but they never, they always hide them within because they feel weird. Yeah, that's that's like a horrible problem that we have in society today. Is like everyone is so fucking fake because they are so scared to just be themselves, mm. or they're yeah. like, or they're they're scared to be themselves because they're scared that they won't fit in or they're going to like stand out. But what people don't realize is like the people who are successful and the people who everyone look up to are the ones who stand out and are the ones who are themselves. And that's like if if you want to strive for any like. If you want to strive for anything and be something, it's like literally fucking 
be yourself and be authentic because when you do that, people appreciate you so much more because it's just, it's so fucking, like, it's so, it's like weird nowadays to just be yourself and be authentic. And it's like, we live in such a fake society that people almost take offense to you just being real with, you know, your friends or whatever. It's like, you ever had like a friend that you're like trying to help and he's like, oh, you're a fucking asshole. It's like, dude, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm being real with you. Like, you know, you want me to lie to you and be fake about it? You know? Elisha, did you have trouble fitting in in high school or were you kind of like part of the Oh yeah, man, guys? I was a loser. Bro, I was a loser. And even, even now, I spend a lot of time alone. Like even, bro, I'm sorry if I've been cutting you guys off here and there. I get no excited when I talk. You know what I mean? Like, I'm loving uh, it. Don't worry, man. Yeah, it, it's don't exciting. Cut me off, dude. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't interrupt me. Yeah. Don't you ever know, do that again. It's like, bro, I get a little, I get a little uh, manic sometimes because no, it's I, just like, fun. I have like a yeah. thought and I'm like, oh, I got to share it now. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, someone yeah, else yeah, is talking. Yeah. I'm going to forget. I'm going to yeah. forget. <laughs> dude, I do forget sometimes. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But uh, back to high school, man. Yeah, I was a loser. I moved here from uh, Florida, so I had zero friends. I went to freshman year just not knowing anyone, moving to a new state. Uh, what gave me a lot of, I could say, I don't know, just like helped me was working out. I was the I was doing the workout guy. You know, I started working out, and mm. then it, in lunchtime, I asked I asked the principal if we could instead of spending an hour at lunch, if we could actually take like. 20 guys to the weight room so every time we would eat our lunch and then for the 30 minutes the rest of 30 minutes we just go to the weight room and pump iron so yeah that was kind of what i was known for and you know what's crazy i did not knowing you not knowing that you did that because i heard that before that you did that i did the exact same thing like i was yeah i was uh for sure i like i was a loser for the first part of my high school experience because I went through all that shit, like I've cystic fibrosis, got diagnosed with that illness, and I was like, I'm fucking weird. I'm, I'm young, and I'm going to die young, and I'm coughing all the time, and I'm not like everyone else. Yeah. My parents separated that year, so I was just fucking sad all the time. I had this blank stare. People called me Imar Lifeless. I couldn't connect with anyone. So that was the first couple of years. Then I started lifting when I was about 13, 14, and then at, at the end of 14, I started BJJ MMA as well, just sparring with grown adults. Then I switched schools, I entered a new school, and I was that guy, that popular guy of the song. Well, not popular, but like everybody knew me, and they were like, wow, this guy does MMA, and I got some respect, but I was still kind of like an outsider. I was, I just couldn't connect with the other kids because of my fucking unique story, right? But I did have some contacts and friends, and there was this fucking gym below the school, and uh, I was just like, I'm gonna go work out there. And uh, yeah. I don't know, it's cool. It gave me a lot of like relief. And uh, but yeah, eventually, I don't know, because of that school, like everybody had a lot more respect for me because of what I was doing. So I found way more contacts, just laughing around with different people. And I got some peace and that like I finished it off like kind of OK. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's like a lot of people's experiences, like, mm. I mean, everyone's a fucking weirdo at some point. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like we're all like. It's such a, like, weirdly used term because, like, everyone's a weird... Like, you know, it's like if someone's doing something different than you, they're considered a weirdo, but to maybe someone else, they're not considered a weirdo. So it's like everyone's a, f everyone's a fucking weirdo, you know? Like, I mean... You know the cure for that? For that, like, oh, I feel weird? Or, oh, oh, I'm, like, anxious about my personality? is just going in the opposite direction of what you think because the instinct is, oh, I'm going to go hide away and cover it up, but it just... It amplifies the whole feeling of weirdness but if you own it it slowly it just goes away it's like a fire it feels hot but if you stick your hand in it the, the nerves are going to burn and you're not going to feel anything anymore if you embrace the cold it's not really going to be cold anymore the same with anxiety if you just go inside of it and just own it and run it like for example with youtube you just you have ideas you feel weird about recording them you just do it anyway um, and yeah. with your personality, if you have jokes, you're usually the funniest when you don't think about it. Just go with it, unfiltered, all the way, boy. I'm Emar here. I have a fucking red mustache now. Like, all right, let's go. Yeah. I don't care. I just own it. That's who I am. Well, and like the reality, yeah, like you're gonna, you're gonna face, like you're gonna embarrass yourself sometimes. Like that's, that's you're gonna face rejection. You know, people are gonna talk shit. Like that's like you hiding from that is not like you protecting yourself because. No matter what you, it's like, it's like the real, it's like Elon Musk, for example. 
It's like I saw this video on him. Like, you know, he's doing everything right. You know, people always say this and then he does that. You know, they're like, oh, he doesn't pay taxes. He, he pays the most taxes anyone ever has in the U.S. And then, you know, they're like, oh, well, he's not doing... Like, the reality is, is like, no matter how good of a person you are, no matter what you're doing, there is always going to be people who hate you, who say things about you, who reject you. You know, like, it's like you could be the most handsome guy in the world and not every single girl is going to like you. You could be the most beautiful girl in the world and not every guy is going to like you. Like, that's just the reality that you have to, uh, like, adapt to and just accept. And once you accept that and people do reject you or people do, you know, make fun of you or whatever, you don't really give a fuck. Dude, it's crazy that we are here, like, with the three of us talking on podcast about fucking strength and, you know, just running it up. But all three of us were at some point, like, losers in high school. That not that fucking... Whoa, what are you saying? And I was, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I was fucking shocked to hear that about you, Elijah. I never thought. I thought you were just, like, one of the cool Yeah, man, I, there was this, like, girl, she would come up to me at a lunch, at lunch table, and I was just, like, paralyzed. She was like, oh, you're <laughs> Dude, yeah. Like, she, like, was giving herself to me, and I just, like, couldn't say. I was like, oh, hi. Oh, I had the same experience, bro. A girl was totally <laughs> yeah. into me, and I was too nervous to do anything, man. I had the so, same fucking right. experience. It's, I, I've had this, like, I, like, I, like, really like this girl, and uh, I was, like, way too scared to, like, tell her how I felt. But she, like, moved away, and I, I had her number. And, like, obviously I had the balls in because it's over the phone. So, like, who gives a shit? And she moved away. So if it doesn't work out, who cares? And I was, like, I, I like, yeah. really used to like you. Dude, every guy, like, liked this. Like, she was the most beautiful girl in the school. And I, like, I, I was, like, hey, I really liked you when you were here. And she's, like, I had the biggest crush on you, too. And I was, Damn. like, bro. <laughs> I was, like, I could have had that shit. Bro, there was one yeah, girl. I went on one date with her, and then after the one date, I just texted her, "Do you want to be together?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, she said, and, she said, and she said, "And she said, um, if you ask me in real life, I'll be yours." And I and I was like, oh. "Wow, dude!" A lot, a lot. <laughs> but then I was too nervous to actually do that. Like I didn't schedule dude. anything else. I just stopped talking to her. I got my validation. I was like, "Bro, man, I was so immature." Bro, so that's immature. The, that's like the craziest thing. Is like, literally the only the only thing holding anyone back is like themselves. Like we hold, we hold ourselves back. Like it's like, li like you're the person holding you back from like, like people have these big dreams, these big visions. And it's like the only thing that is holding you back is you and the fear that you have about whatever rea like re whatever reality you want to live. You know, it's like you want a beautiful girlfriend, but you can't go out and talk to fucking girls. So how are you going to get that beautiful girlfriend? You think like, you think like, like people think like, Oh, I'm going to go get, 20 inch biceps and then I'm gonna have the confidence to go talk to the girl. It's yeah, like, exactly. It's like, no, go talk to that girl when you're a fucking skinny loser. And then it's like, then when you're a buff fucking Chad, you're, you know, now, now like, now you have even more confidence and now that whole time you've been talking to girls. So now like, you know what I mean? It's like. But again, what we were saying earlier, outcome obsessed, bro. outcome obsessed. Exactly. That's again, the same thing, not focusing on the process. And it's like, people are so scared of like, like, I don't know if you guys have ever, like, been in a situation where, like, like, you know, an awkward silence or, like, you know, it's just, you know, you say, like, you say a joke the and, they, and they don't get the joke and, like, you're, like, it's just quiet and you're, like, what the fuck? You know, like, it's so fucking awkward. Yeah. And it's, like, I actually, like, I laugh in those moments, like, to myself because I'm, like, most people would be, like, you know, they're, like, oh, my God. Like, what? Yeah, like I just laugh because it's, like, it's just, fu like, you know, you can just laugh at yourself and just, like, it's like what Again, we we're going back to. Most, just people are act, most people are acting, you know, they're acting, brother. Like, exactly. And even us, like, even me, like, I, you know, it's hard not to act. Like, yeah. And once you drop that mask, though, and realize we're all kind of similar, we're all kind of same, we want to, we're going to shit, we're going to take a shit today, we're going to wake up, you know, try to eat, make it in life. Like, people just, it's easy to take yourself too seriously. Yeah, we all want the same things, really. Like, we all want to all right, share. I want, we all want to. Good. I want. I want to approach an, another topic, Elijah. Three years ago, when I was watching you, I was like, I think I commented on two different videos. Start BJJ because I I just felt that yeah. it would be ideal for you. And then fucking hell, man, I'm talking to you years later, and you're like a huge proponent of it. And uh, and Mason, like, it's to also change your life. And man, I just it's crazy. We all it's do it. So though. cool. That's yeah. Yeah, man. It's such a, it's like a, yo, 
it's crazy to what? I'm just saying, BJJ, like you said, it's one of those activities that can be boring. Like BJJ is sometimes boring. I'm like, I don't want to go. Yeah, fucking you drilling, know, like, man. Dude, you're you're sitting there. Yeah, it's like boring, but but you can get to a place where you enjoy that, and you're just like, yeah, I'm so grateful I could do this. And everyone listening, you if you want an introduction to BJJ, if you don't know what BJJ is, uh, fix, stop living like that. Watch the episode uh, <laughs> Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah, yeah. that we recorded and inform yourself. But yeah, yeah, like like you said, it's like it's it's kind of like monotonous like sometimes like when you're like when you're just sitting there and you're just like shit like it's like it's it can be boring but then you you look at like the outcome of it and it's like oh fuck i just realized why i have so much trouble staying consistent with bjj is because (laughs) no i just fucking realized this because throughout this i've done it for six years i got my blue belt after three years most people get it in a year and a half or something or two years and um I've always had trouble staying consistent with jiu-jitsu and it's mostly been based around my excitement for it, my interest for it. But the reason is, it, there's a large part of the jiu-jitsu practice is relatively mundane, not super stimulating, right? And we just discussed how much of an issue I have with stimulation, always on my phone, always novelty, always listening to music. And because jiu-jitsu is like that, the reward is a little bit deeper in it. Prolonged. Like, I feel... Oftentimes, especially after I've, you know, after it becomes a little bit more mundane or I, ha- I have been going for five weeks again and it's like m- more mundane to me, I just sort of like lose the spark a little bit. And then right away, I'm just like, oh, I'll just spend the whole day listening to music or lifting or, you know, this. I just fucking realized that that's the reason why I have a hard yeah, time staying man. consistent. Yeah. Same thing with the weights, you know, for, for me, it was like the weight, like, oh, lifting, like. Dude, I want to enjoy, I want fire in the belly when I step into that weight room. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, but but if I'm always, what, what's the point of pumping music the rest of the day and pumping it in the gym? Like, what am I going to the gym just to lift weights? I feel like a lot of guys go to the gym now too. They're addicted to taking pre-workout and listening to music and the feeling that it gives them. They're not addicted to actually working out. Yeah, they, they, oh, they, I completely agree. Like, like they can't, they, well... <laughs> the reality is they're like, well, I can't work out if I don't take pre-work and I don't have music. So it's like, oh, so you really don't like to work out. You, <laughs> you like don't to like work out. You yeah. like to take pre-workout and listen to music and work out. Yeah. So working out is actually on the like the last of the list. Like you'd rather take pre-workout and listen to music than fucking lift. So it's like, right. It's like that. Like I mean, that's the reality for a lot of people, and I I had that reality too. It's like. I mean, dude, when you fucking take pre-workout or some shit, like, you're fucking fired up, you know, like, you're like, holy shit, like, let's fucking get it. But it's like, right. if you can't have that fire in the belly when you don't take pre-workout, then you're missing something, like, there's something missing because you should have that, you know, you should have that ability to be like, let's fucking go, or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like... You ever see those old uh, videos with Arnold, bro? Like where he just he looks like joyful to be working out with his buddies and there's no headphones in. Yeah, he's they're just, like just fucking grinding. Yeah, like yeah. Well, is that like that's like that shows like real passion and real love for like lifting weights. It's like it's like the video like where he compared having an orgasm to the pump in the gym. It's like yeah. I mean, dude, that's like dude. When you get a pump and you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you know, doing some fucking bicep foot poses, like you're like, it is orgasmic. Oh, can you tell us real quick? I, I wanted to talk to you. You said you've been eating more carbs. Yeah, yeah. You just so, uh, more energy pump. Yeah, we were talking about this a little bit before. And hell yeah, I want to go into this a little bit. So, I, I can't remember. We were talking, like, me and you were talking sometime. And you you uh, sent me that video of the guy um, talking about, like, the importance of carbs and, you know, ca- like, yeah. the, calor- the caloric intake. Like, consistent carbs and consistent caloric intake. And... I, that's like the biggest thing that I struggled with since the very first day I started lifting was like having consistent carbohydrates and consistent meals. I'd eat a big meal in the morning and then I wouldn't eat again till night and I'd have another big meal. It wasn't like a consistent, like I'd eat then, you know, every two hours, every three hours. Like I was so fucking inconsistent with my meals. Some days I'd wake up and eat. Some days I'd eat. I wouldn't wake up and eat and I'd eat at 1 p.m. 
But since I watched that video that you sent me, and we can link this somewhere. Or, Send it to me as well. I haven't even watched it. I have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. But uh, basically, it's on the basis of like you take like depending on how much you weigh, you know, you take like every meal you have, it's like sixty to se like sixty to seventy five carbs, or you know, whatever you weigh. You know, the more you weigh, the more yeah, carbs. Yeah. Obviously, the less you weigh, the less carbs. But uh, the basis is like let's say every meal you have seventy five carbohydrates with the meal, and dude, I have fucking like, so I I started like you sent me that video maybe two two months ago two to three months ago yeah and i've like i was weighing about like 152 about four months ago when i weighed in and now i'm weighing like 167 i have more energy and i'm like i'm like hungry like not all the time but like i used to like eat in the morning and i wouldn't be hungry all day and then i eat at night and it's like now i'm like i'm like fucking i'm like ah i want to eat you know i'm like i i gotta fuel my body the way it should be fueled yeah and like now I don't have those crashes in the afternoon. Like I'm constantly fueled. I'm constantly ready to go. I'm not tired. And what I realized it's is like- It's almost like you have like a constant pump too. Like it, you're always dude, like pumped that is and fucking, ready for action. Dude, like yeah. right now, like my fucking biceps are fucking pumped. Like, <laughs> you're gonna kill me. <laughs> I'm not, dude, it's like, it's like you said, dude. I like, no I one, like, absolutely no one. I got, Silence. I got, Listen, <laughs> right now my biceps are fucking bad, bro. <laughs> Dude, it literally is like, and then dude, yeah. the pumps in the gym are fucking, it, dude. Oh my god! And not only that, that, but uh, seriously, not only that, but I've gotten like so much stronger, dude. It's like I'm on steroids. Like, I think uh, probably most people I w that are lifting, even me, like I wasn't always consistent. Even now, like I'm, you know, I need to be better because that feeling is unbeatable. Like you can't put a price on that feeling, bro. When you're feeling strong and pumped, mm. and like you just High test like that, is, and that just that's, that's not only that's in the gym, but just like every fucking hour of the day, you feel like that, you know. Every hour of the day, right? Yeah. You know, uh, what? I think most I people are probably out. under eating. No, yeah, no, yeah, most it, people are probably I, under eating. I uh, I remember you saying this. I can't remember if you said it or someone else did, but I think you said it. It's like I was under eating, and that was the problem. I thought I was eating enough, but I fucking wasn't. And that now that I'm actually fueling myself with the right amount of calories that I need, and I'm eating when I should be, and I'm staying consistent with my meals, and I'm eating every two to three hours, and I'm, and I'm when I when I say I'm eat like eating every two to three hours, it's not fucking bullshit. It's like a range of like right. I'm eating like ground ground beef, you know, steak, shrimp, tuna, oysters, you know, like a variety of me, you know, every meal is like a variety of different things. You know, with carbohydrates, uh, you know, r yeah. white rice, oatmeal, all those different things. And, dude, I feel, I feel fucking insane. Yeah, when you get used to under eating, too, it's like your metabolism slows down. Your energy, like, you kind of cap your energy. Because your body's like, all right, he's going to feed me this much. So, this is going to be my energy. It's kind of crazy. Well, and also, too, it's like... Consistent, eating more. W like, people would think I put on, like, 15 pounds. And, like, I'm actually, like, more lean... Than I was, yeah, I than I was when I like what like I weigh fifteen more pounds and I'm more lean than I was when I weighed less, you know. And like people, like in people's mind, that's like, dude, that's fucking impossible, you know. That's not that's not how it works. And it's like, dude, that's bullshit. Like I'm fucking living. Your muscles are yeah. filled with that glycogen and the water, and like you just look more full. And exactly, good. and I'm like yeah. training harder. Like when I go in the gym, I can yep. like I'm not like. I'm not like drowsy. Like I'm like the whole like the whole workout. I'm fucking pumped. Like, like I'm working my ass off, and I oh, I yeah. feel good after the workout. Like I'm not drained. I'm not like pumped. I'm not like tired after the workout. I'm like, I'm you can I can feel the fucking testosterone. Like I don't want to go pumped, into man. detail on how I feel it. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> and if you don't, try it out, and you'll fucking know. Try it out. But yeah, it's like. The under eating thing is huge, man. And then it's it's even more important, especially when you're lifting and doing jujitsu or another activity, because oh, it's yeah. easy to like it's easy to like go from just lifting and eating the same thing and then doing jujitsu and think you're eating enough. And like maybe the scale is not replicating it, but it's like, dude, you got it like and I don't mean fucking eat like insane amount of calories, but like try it out, eat more, eat consistently, yeah. stay stay on that consistent schedule. And I so like as a guideline, a guideline, like if you're 200 pounds, you probably need to aim for like four meals a day, 70 grams of carbs per meal, 50 grams of carbs per meal. If you're like 160, like 70, maybe like 
50 to 60 grams of carbs and like 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal. So like that's just some basic guidelines. It, it depends on your weight. Uh, Very bad but if you just want to try that out, like try that for a week and see how you feel. Mm. Yeah, like, like I'm listening to all of this and I'm very interested. Uh, I definitely believe in a high carb diet, but all my, uh, I've basically done intermittent fasting since about uh, 2014. And so I've done that for a very long time. And I function the best on like two or three big meals in a day with hours between them where I can really like stop digesting, where I can reach a zone. I'm, okay, I'm not digesting anything right now. I'm fully clear. That's where I concentrate the best. And it's like when I'm the most focused. I've also really enjoy um, just trading with nothing. Um, and then afterwards slamming a huge meal and get that huge hormonal response. And I really feel like the testosterone, the insulin, everything wakes up and it just starts building. So I believe that there is definitely some value in having carbs and protein in your system before a workout because I have tried that, but not extensively as you guys, uh, because obviously the glycine and everything is it's primed. But I also believe that if you're in a fasted state, um, and then you refeed after your training session, you have that stimulus of the training session, which obviously is, is stored down your muscles and everything, yeah. and your body is signaling either, either the, the insulin will, is primed. Can work. Definitely. Just, so just I'm just listening it. with Everyone's interest. Different. I will. I yeah. will try it. Yeah, I will try it for sure. Uh, but yeah, for like all my life, I've fasted so much. I don't know. Have you ever really? Uh, have you ever delved into that, Elisha? Oh yeah, bro. I, I used to do keto for two years. I made videos on it. I fasted all the time. Mm -hmm. I um, mm -hmm. I think if you want to be competitive and, and and very like athletic, like if you're an athlete, I think you need carbs, man. Yeah, no, I agree. I've yeah, never done no carb, yeah. and I'm not not interested in no carb. <laughs> but yeah, so actually, there's some uh, serious strength coaches saying uh, athletes. Uh, should be getting like more than 500 grams of carbs per day, and it's it's like easy to underestimate that you you should actually put some effort into that, like getting an extra bowl of. And man, I hear people saying like, don't eat don't eat oats oats, bro. I need oats <laughs> to get my fucking carbs in, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. how do you, how do you? Because I think one thing I remember about you, Eli, is you were big into like rice cookers, right? Yeah, yeah, I like the rice cooker. I actually mm. don't have one now. I just make it in a pot. But um, yeah. my favorite the carbs are like oats. Um, yeah, it's just you feel better making it in a re regular pot. Um, you add your own stuff to it. I, I really like rice, potatoes, oats, and I love honey, man. Honey's like a, a huge <laughs> carb source. Like the hunters. Dude. Honey is everything. Dude. Bro, people, bro people, I heard dude. Makuna honey can uh, actually help with like cystic fibrosis. Have you looked Wait. into this at all? Have you actually heard that? Yeah, yeah. No joke. I've been read. It has uh, so Makuna honey specifically, which is more expensive, has this thing called myoglycosyl, something like that, which is has an array of benefits. Like, like I'm googling it right up. now. Yeah, like dude, it, holy shit! It, it says it on newsmedical.net. Makuna honey could be useful in treating cystic fibrosis lung infection. Yes. What the fuck? It's a, It's because it's an antibiotic oh, alternative to treat antimicrobial uh, resistance respiratory yeah. infections. It kills uh, bacteria. Yeah, and it kills the bacteria found in cystic uh, cystic fibrosis infections. Wow, man, that's uh no, but it just shows oh, how. Awesome. Buy yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fucking buy some, but I've been on the honey grind for a while now, and uh, I'm definitely interested in trying some fancier types. I've just done like the basic organic honey at the store, uh, but there's like a bunch of different honeys. Like, there's some honeys that are found in some areas and mountains in Armenia, I think, uh, that are super uh, expensive because they're made by specific types of bees, and there's all these stories about uh, the ancient Greeks that they used this type of honey and yeah. stuff like they called it. Uh, they called it the ancient Greeks called it uh, al um, ambrosia, which means mm -hmm. nectar of the gods. Yeah, you know, like it was God's fucking drink, man. That's all you need in life: meat and honey and garlic, honey, baby. <laughs> and garlic, yeah, yeah garlic too. <laughs> Dude, man, my yeah. sister People... bought me some uh, honey for Christmas, and it's like from New Zealand, but it's really yeah, you nice. showed like, that kuna honey, all these different uh, kinds, bro. They're so it's so good. Go ahead, yeah, it's uh. It's expensive, but it's well worth it. Like, uh, it's it it literally is an antibiotic alternative. So it's like 
you can it's uh you can kill like bacterial infections. So like if you're ever sick, you can like put it in your tea or certain the sirens. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Cops are coming. <laughs> I just heard that video today again where you said that Elijah. You were like, the sirens are <laughs> here. The cops are here. <laughs> but yeah, it's like it can be used to like treat certain bacterial infections. So, uh, dude, one 500 grams pot is like six, 77 euros. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. It's expensive. Like, dude, for a little container here, it's like 50 bucks. But you also, it's like, it's not used like uh, regular, like you're not just pouring it in your mouth. You know, you use it in like, sure. you know, you use like small little, you know, you pour it, like if you're sick, you pour it in your tea or, you know, like mm. I, what I like to do is like, I like to put honey in like my yogurt. So I'll put like a little, I'll put a little bit of the, the maku honey with the, with the other honey that I use just so I get, you know, a little bit of, you know, both. So... Mm. Yeah, dude. If you fucking if you use it like the regular honey, man, you'd be you'd be spending like three hundred dollars a month on honey. <laughs> Maybe uh, once we take it, talks it straight to the next level. We gotta start. Be, uh, we gotta start selling those chains, man. Yeah, we gotta start sell, that, selling oh, chains t-shirts. <laughs> we should we should sell honey though, man. Like we could sell. Honey oh, that's a great sell. idea, yeah. dude. You, like, we got it. We gotta bee. help the bees, man. They're going extinct. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's go. We gotta we, yeah, gotta, we gotta start the high thumos talks of strength uh, beef arm. Yeah, high thumos talks of strength honey in <laughs> limited. <laughs> yeah. No joke, I would love to raise bees one day, man. Like I want to raise bees. That'd be sick. That would be. Man. But you uh, got that nice little white suit in the middle people, of the bees. People, uh, going to back to what we were talking about earlier about like. Um. Uh, people like over at like people are like scared to fucking like eat like a lot of honey and like all this stuff dude i have like it's actually like it's it's not this like people like are get scared of it because it has all the sugar or whatever dude that's fucking bullshit like dude i literally i pour <laughs> that shit up in my mouth and i put that i put it on my oatmeal i put it on my yogurt i mean i probably eat so much of it a day and all it does is just make me yeah. feel amazing Elijah, one thing that, that I noticed, uh, so you do BJJ and one time you talked about your training routine and what you said is that you'd actually like do BJJ um, in the evening and like a couple of hours before that, you'd get your lifting session in. And I was just like, damn, because the way I, I fucking train uh, BJJ, like I really like split those days up and it actually inspired me like, hey, maybe I can like, maybe I'm underestimating myself here and maybe I can because you said like, you were doing BJJ fuck, like man. five times, five times per week, a BJJ and then before that three times per week also lifting session or four times per week. That's impressive. Yeah, so yeah. I'm curious, like, um, did you try that? Did you just implement it right away like that? And what do you eat in between? Yeah, because, because I was like, I don't want to slack on lifting. If I'm going to do BJJ, I don't want to give up lifting. That's the correct um, mentality. And that, most people, they do that. You goals, though. Yeah. yeah, just one thing. Most people, they do that for like a couple of weeks in the beginning. They're like, oh, I don't want to lose out the lifting. But then they just stop. And you kept it up. Right. And most BJJ guys, like, they don't lift. There's a lot of BJJ guys like, oh, it doesn't matter. It fucking matters. And that's known in the sport, too. Like, if you lift and you have good technique, you're going to be a weapon. It, technique's fine and all, but you need to lift. That, that's what you even see the top competitors gordon ryan uh you know nikki uh, nikki rod guy nikki like ryan, lifting. Yeah, yeah. everyone's lifting these days um so yeah i would say you can do it you're young you're healthy you're high test just uh, eat enough food and get enough sleep and you can train in the morning for 45 minutes and do a hour two hour bjj session at night that's also what I notice is like you can train like fucking crazy if you get the right food in and you sleep good. Yeah, dude, we're meant for movement. The human body is capable of, of a lot of movement. And, and you might it might be like hard at first, but once you get used to it and you're you're doing the right things, it'll be easy. So Elijah, like, but you I actually said girl. you Oh go ahead. You would actually do the lifting like a couple of hours before your BJJ session. So not all the way in the morning, but actually a couple of hours before. Um, it's, uh, I would like, uh, ideally it's like six hours before. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's uh, six hours is all your glycogen gets refilled. Mm. I can eat a big meal and not have it in my stomach when I'm rolling. Yeah. So, ask, uh, uh, Mason, a question, Mason, no. 
that uh, tournament that you just had, man. That's exciting. Yeah, dude, it was it was like one of the best experiences of my life. Like I haven't Crazy. felt. I played sports when I was like little, and obviously, like, dude, I like I thrive off a of competition. I'm like. I'm very competitive. Like, I want to be the best in everything that I do. I want to be better than everyone else. And, uh, yeah. dude, I felt that, like, fire again to, like, be the best. Mm -hmm. And, like, not that, like, I hated the people I was going up against, but I'm like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, I get, I get that fire that. in me. I'm like, I yeah. want to be the fucking best, and you're in my way to be the best, so I'm going to beat you. And, like... It, it like it motivates me to like not only that but within the competition and I'm sure you felt this way too it's like after that competition it almost drives you to be better and like to to not only to be better but like hone certain things like you need to get better at this you need to get better at that and like you kind of see like what you need to improve upon and then you just fucking attack it after that yeah like it, it just hell yeah it, I don't know. You like, had three matches? Yep. That's get, pretty I good. know what you mean, though, man. You're like, you go in there, you, you, and then you're done. You're like, all right, we're back, back to training, back to real life. Like, I, I want to be better. Well, yeah, and then it's like, and then it's like, then it's like, I can't wait to get in the next competition and, like, yep. then see my improvements from the last competition. You know, like, it's just, that's like what's satisfying about it is like, and that's what excites me is like, honestly, I wouldn't, like, if I just trained all the time, and I, I'm so glad that you, that you like suggested I get got in the competition because I mean that's what yeah. motivates me to go and train a lot of the time is like I want to do a lot of competitions because that motivates me to go and train and like get better because I know that like everyone I'm about to go up against is doing the same thing so it's like yeah it like motivates me to get in the gym and like some days I'm like eh, I really don't want to go roll I don't want to go to the right. gym and then it's like. Fuck, I gotta get better though, cause I like I don't want to fucking lose. So it's no. like that's it, the importance of competition because it, it gives you a goal. Why why the hell else are you training if you don't have like a goal or competition to be better? You're just kind of like spinning your wheels. Competition keeps you young, like it does. It, it, it is it like boost Sasha, dude. It it is like the that's another underrated thing. Is like man, you gotta find competition in whatever the fuck you do, cause like. It drives you like no other, and it will give you that vision, and it will, it'll just, it's almost on the lines of like a purpose, you know, like with a purpose, you have that, you have that, I, you have that I tunnel agree. vision, you know, like when, you, when you're, I think that men need competition, bro, and without it, we get depressed. I, uh, you do. Little, little side, little side note, like I think there's five things that men need. I've talked about this before, but I think jujitsu covers them really well you need competition you need rank and from that rank you get respect so that's like the belt system so as you go up in the ranks you you get respect you need reward reward is giving you this feeling of uh accomplishment and you know good good dopamine hits uh you need creative outlet so everyone has a unique style right like your style is different than mine and imar and the last thing you need is flow you need to be able to get into flow People do drugs to get into flow. People will do crazy stuff to get into flow. They'll go skydiving, you know, or bungee jumping, or, uh, you know, just crazy shit to get that feeling of flow. So, jiu-jitsu gives that to you too, man. You connect those five things, you're going to be you're gonna be feeling alive. Well-rounded, man. Yeah, flow is interesting, isn't it? People, bro, well, think about this. If you look at it, why video games are so successful, it's because they combine those five things. Like, what is the what's the most popular video game? Would you say um, Call of Duty? Call of Duty. Why? Look at it. Competition. You get rank. You know your rank. Everyone has a rank. You get reward. You get kill streaks. Uh, it's a creative way for you. You know you can create cool plays and stuff <laughs> and just be your own like beast. And you get in flow. Yeah. So you dude, get I, you get everything from that. Well, I, yeah. It, it and it's like it's the the. The bad thing about video games is like you're getting all those things, you but that. you're getting all those things, but you're not actually make like you take off the headset and then you're stuck in your life. In you're getting game. illusory, like, illusory yeah, yeah. gains. Yeah, exactly. And it's like yeah. that's what people don't understand is like they love that feeling of the video game, 
but you can channel that in your life and have the same feelings in your life. And it's going to be even more satisfying if you do it in your life than if you do it on a fucking video game. Because then you actually have something tangible to look at, to feel, and to like, you're like, oh wow, I'm actually improving. I'm actually, I'm striving for this competition. I'm getting better and... Like you said, I mean, that's why jujitsu is so important because you can see, you can feel and see all those five mm-hmm. things in action and you can do them yourself. We got to ask ourselves, so what's the difference between video games and why do so many more people do that? It's because of the comfort. Uh, it's easy. You can do it. If your life is really fucked up and I was in a phase of my, uh, a huge part of my life, I really was like that. I use video games to escape. It's a coping mechanism and you still get to do all those five things that make, give you that fulfilling feeling. Uh, but right. you get so, to do so it yeah. while protecting yourself. Well, the real but world you, at the end of the tough. day, just it, it just finishing hard. this up. At the end of the day, you do it well to protect yourself, but you're shooting yourself in the in the foot because you're staying in that position. You're not growing any stronger. Yeah. The what real world is tough. Say, like, yeah, exactly. Oh, just uh, the real world is hard, and it doesn't provide you with those things. So you have to seek them out. Mm. You got to put yourself in scenarios that give you that. So the video games aren't necessarily bad. You just got to be aware of, yeah. of it's giving you this innate desire that you have as a man what? to be competitive, and you got to find that in real life. Well, it's like a it's if you think about mm. it, it's like a video game. You can walk into your room in your own house alone, turn on the Xbox controller and play and get that competition. But in real life, you have to get out, dress up, get in your car. Walk yeah. into the uh, jujitsu gym or MMA gym, sign up, talk to people, look people in the face, and then be at fucking yes. day, be at day one, knowing that you're gonna suck fucking ass, and everyone around you is better than you, and you're gonna have to <laughs> go in there day after day and fucking grind to get better. And mm. frankly, you're gonna be the fucking worst in that gym for a couple fucking months, maybe even longer than that, you know, depending on the fucking gym. So you're going to, like, it's that ego check. Like, you, that's, that's the biggest thing that I had is, like, I'm very competitive. So, like, I walked in there, like, oh, I'm fucking strong. I'm fucking this and that. And I got my Same fucking here, ego check because I got fucking slammed to the mat by a little girl. And I was like, what the, uh. what the fuck, dude? You know, like, like I'm a grown-ass man. I, I've been lifting for fucking four years. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. You know, and I walked out of there like, you know what, maybe, maybe I – but it's like that – it gave me that, like, a lot of people would get discouraged by that, but I was like, I'm going to beat that. No, I'm joking. Like, but, uh, like, I, like, only and, rolling with her and, to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my only competition. But it's like, uh, but yeah, it's like, it, Yo, it, before we move on, uh, how was the uh, actual, like, you had three guys, you beat them all? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Dude. My man. Yeah. yeah. It was, dude, it was, it was, uh, it was like, I don't know, man. It was exhilarating. Fuck. So when you look them in the eyes, what, how were they? Like, were they nervous as well? Did they look determined to beat you? Were they more aggressive, less aggressive? Well, Tell me I was about at, that. I was at like a where the competition was. It's kind of out in the country, so I was against a bunch of like fucking hicks, you know, Oklahoma farm boys. Country. Yeah, farm boys. They're strong though. Yeah, dude, and yeah, catch wrestling. Re- really strong. Yeah, like farm strength. Have you ever heard of that? Like, yeah. tough. Were um, they actually tough? Yeah, like tough, like tough dudes. You know, like. But yeah. it, it gave me it. Like I kind of grew up in that environment, and I've always had that type of mentality. So I mean, and dude, like I like, I don't know, man. Like I, I have like I have that. I have like something that when I'm in that situation, like I fucking click on. I like grip my teeth, and I'm on. like, yeah. I, I just yeah. like I was nervous. I was really fucking nervous when I was like standing there waiting my turn and you know, you know, then I get on the mat and then it's like, but as soon as I get there and I look that dude in the eye, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> like, <time>. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, you, like, bro, briefly, I briefly, love that. can you tell me, like, tell me a bit about like, what did you do? Did you pull guard? How did you submit these guys? Well, I, I, uh, well, I took your advice and I, uh, didn't pull guard. So okay. basically, well done, Mason. Did they? No, no, no. We kind of we kind of tussled and, you know, we were pulling on okay. each other. But uh yeah, dude, I mean, it was like I mean, it wasn't these guys, I mean, obviously like it was a it was a white belt competition, so I mean, sure. it wasn't it wasn't the most skillful, you know? So uh sure. But that can actually make it harder because they're so unpredictable and it's like so strength based well, and it's, wild. The thing is like I'm also very unpredictable too, so like it's like uh, you know, like I when I like when I'm talking, like I'm not like 
I mean, I've been doing it for six, seven months. So it's like, yeah. dude, competition in six months, winning it, you're doing great, Mason. Yeah, well, it's like, it's like, man, there's like, but fuck. you're still spies, there's so, obviously. There's so much. There's so much. <laughs> like when you when you look back at it, man, there's like so much to learn, and like you realize that, like, fuck, I suck. Like you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> even though you, even though you won, you're like, yeah, oh my god, even though, yeah, even I'm though I win, yeah, even though I won, it's like, fuck, man, those guys really suck. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, but it's like you look back and it's like, dude, I like, I really like, I could imagine if I went up against you, Mar, you know, like, I'd probably get <laughs> did my you, fucking. Did you get ass. any points? Did you get any points, or, or like, was it just submission? No, like, I got, I got, I won by points two times, and I got a submission. What was this sub? So, toe poke. Toe toe hold. Yeah. Oh, toe hold. Yeah, I was like toe poke. I what did you, you poke? That's what, that's yeah. What, like, my, like, did you poke? Did no, you poke no, no, them no, in like, the navel yeah. and they were like, I tap, I tap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was it was a fucking great experience and like toe hold, impressive, awesome. impressive. So, what, what do you like, think, Mason, separated you from them? Because I've done a lot of competitions, and to be honest, like. I have a hard time making it happen in competition. Uh, it's always been a struggle of mine because I'm so aggressive, I'm so wild. And yeah. I lately I've been philosophizing about, uh, philosoph I find that a difficult word, but I've been thinking a lot about um, what makes a winner in a competition, what separates you from the average guy in competition. What's your what views on that? What separates me? Yeah, what separated you during the competition from your opponents? What got you to I win, honestly, you think, mentally? Uh, honestly, I would say, like, just the dr like the drive and, like, the... I don't know, like, I mean, they weren't... Like, I mean, we, were, we were pretty... Was it physical fitness? Was it physical fitness? Because I feel like... Yeah, I mean, the, li the lifting and, like, be being strong, like, really... Like, especially, yeah. like, when you're... When you can, like, pull someone... You know what I mean? Like, you have that strength to, like, yeah. pull someone down and, like... Like, you know, you can manipulate their body a lot easier, but... Also, like that, that like that drive too. Like, uh, like I felt like they weren't as competitive as I like. Like they were, like they were kind of just like, eh, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. And I'm like, nah, I want to fucking win, you know? Like, so I, I had that like extra drive, and I feel like when they got in a the situation, they were less like, you know. I, I feel like the drive and the competitiveness is a huge fucking part because when you get in those sticky situations or something, if you have that like mentality and that drive you really, really push harder than what other people would to, you know. But also the, phys the physicality is a huge part. Like lifting and like being physically strong and then also having the technique is such a fucking huge advantage. Because like you said, a lot of people don't lift and it's a very huge disadvantage if you don't. And you're, up, and you're, and you're equally, you know, you're equally skilled. Yep. Mm, interesting. What about you, uh, Elisha? Like, um about what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, exactly. So, so what I've noticed, I've competed three times now. And mm -hmm. uh, I realized that every time I've compete, I get a little, like I slowed down a little bit. Like in my first competition, holy shit, bro, my forearms were on fire. I was <laughs> running out of breath in, a, in 30 seconds. Now it's like, okay, I'm here to do jujitsu. And jujitsu itself is kind of a game. It's like playing chess. It is. So you don't need to like like if I was doing Muay Thai or some stand up, I'm sure it'd be different. But I'm not. I'm, there's no risk of getting hit in the face or or like actually, you're playing a game. Like let's be real with jujitsu competition. So I think if you can slow down and play the position and and ju and play your game, man. Like do jujitsu. Don't try to. The, the only match I ever lost was I went against a wrestler. And I tried to wrestle, and I suck at wrestling. And this guy was a state champ, and I didn't do jujitsu, bro. And it came down to uh, the final takedown, and he took me down, and I lost. But if you just slow down, you're not in any immediate danger, and you can get out of bad spots. So for me, it's like don't wear yourself out too fast. Do jujitsu, get in a good position. That's it. I, I, hopefully that makes sense. It does. It does. I think that's a good insight. How, how do you say, um, are you good at dealing with loss, Elisha? Loss? Like, how was that for Actually, you? How, yeah, how, loss. How did it feel to get second place? 
I was I was pissed because I didn't I wanted to go my whole white belt uh, without uh, any losses. So mm. I won every other comp, but that was the one loss, and uh, it felt bad because it came down to sudden death, which is like I didn't even know there's a sudden death. We only had a minute, and it was whoever took the other guy down first. So the guy took me <laughs> yep. down in, in the last five seconds, and I'm like, okay, like I just lost. Fuck. And I was mad at myself. I was mad at myself because I felt like I, di- I didn't do jujitsu. That's what I was upset about. Yeah. You know what's uh, interesting? Like I've lost competitions a lot. I've lost my first MMA fight. However, I've grown very wise from those losses. And I, I, I almost feel so strong uh, in my defeats because I know I always give it all. And I just think like, fuck it, man. I gave it my all and I'm proud. And I think that's the most important thing, that you go out there and fight and you give it your all and you reflect on what you could do better. But it gives me a certain type of wisdom. Um, and I have all this experience and I'm still so young. All my records are amateur. Like my MMA fight, that's amateur. If, you, if I go pro, that's not on there. And I feel like yeah. it's, it's, I don't know, man, it's made me so wise. But at the same time, of course, I want to start getting more wins. Like a goal for 20, 2020 yeah. is like, I want to like, I want to get that gold sometime. So I'm thinking a lot about like what I need to change. And obviously during the show, we've some topics came up that I, like, that I struggle with, with my consistency, with my, my type of like uh, habits. So I feel that th- that does play a huge role in, um, uh, your training leading up to the competition. Um, and yeah, mentally, I just go into that wild man mode, even though I'm a blue belt with two stripes, like I just go fucking wild and then I lose it. It just slips out of my Bro, hands. If you watch, watch a black belt roll, like a black belt going against someone is, is usually like more calm. Uh, mm. If you, had, what's that guy from Australia? He's a no gi, Craig. Um, Craig Jones. Craig Jones, look at Craig Jones' yeah. role, bro. He's like, he's not even trying. And it, yeah, yeah, and, but yeah. He, but he, he's like, so slow down, play mm. the position, and when you need to be explosive, then you can do that. But don't, like, mm. always be, like, like a freaking, uh, you know, chicken, like, running around, like, you know, just crazy. Yeah. Mm. Slow down. Yeah, so, it, so but it is, it is part of my game, so I need to make sure that I could do that explosive double leg takedown. Absolutely. And, but I can Absolutely. do that with more control and more uh, contingencies and more, yeah, just composure. Composure is like a huge deal, you know, and flow is very interesting. Like, I think the way I approach getting into flow in a competition is too hype. I really fuck myself up with hype and I'm going to kill the guy, but I lose myself a little bit in that and I need to tone it down just a little notch, but not I too think, much. I think hype... That can be that can be expanded though to anything in life. Like if you're overhyped, it, I think it can take you out of flow state. Think about when we were doing this podcast. Like we feel anxiety because we're hyped. We want to perform the best we can. Sometimes you just gotta let go, man. You just gotta go into the fritz, let go, and see what comes out of it. And your brain, that's when it turns on. That's when that flow state is unlocked. When you just go in without having having everything figured out. You yeah, out and as I, you go. yeah, and man, I struggle with that because I'm I'm kind of a control freak, and I want to have it all figured out. I have a hard time letting go, and I guess maybe that's why I am so hype as a sort of cope for having a hard time just letting yeah. go and believing in it. <laughs> and my coach is always saying to me like, every time I 100% believe in it, and I just like let go and just go with it, I do so well. And whenever I I am like too hyped and wild. I get copy and I get junky and man yeah. so every time I lose a competition I feel way, so, for for some reason every time I lose a competition I feel so good all of a sudden because I can let go of all of that and I'm just in the flow yeah, right away but after the competition so the next day after the competition I'll go to training and I'll fucking submit my teammate who like won gold like one weight class above even <laughs> because I'm in that zone and in a proper zone but before the competition I kind of yeah. fuck myself um, There's something so, there, man. When we always yeah. try to be perfect and, and are always mm. uh, comparing ourselves to others, we, we take away our natural genius, I think. Um, we can wrap it up here soon, too. I know, I think Mason's got to go. Yeah, but, he uh, sent me a message like, uh, let's wrap it up. There's, but, uh, there's, this, uh, there's this last thing, last concept. There's this um, thing called Wu Wei, and it's a Chinese philosophy of the art of spontaneity. And actually, like, just 
being spont- spontaneous and like in our conversation, sometimes just these things come up that click with you. And even mm. in our daily life, we can take that. We can be more spontaneous by letting go. Stop trying to micromanage every fucking part of yourself and just be, be yourself. Be, and that's when you unlock that, uh, that power. So yeah. Ooh, wait. wait. Care to look it up. How do you Ooh, spell wait, that? It's yeah. I do not know. But I'll look it up for you. Because I looked it up and I saw yeah. Huawei, like the Chinese electronics company. <laughs> uh, no, but I'll, I'll look I'll, into I'm that. Gonna, yeah. There's books on it. It's The Art of Spontaneity or something like that. The you know what, go, Elijah? That's where, it's, from, it's from the book The Art of Letting Go. That's what it's called. You know, when you get back on, I'm sure you will uh, one day. We'll, we'll talk about that more. Uh, but Absolutely. For now, I want to say, like, dude, New Year's special, New Year's coming. This was just a fucking insane honor it's so surreal after like watching videos of someone is, and then just engaging and then we're sitting here three and grow men in different continents sitting here talking about the things yeah. that we deal with on a daily basis god damn it's beautiful man it's beautiful I'm so grateful for you guys yeah just, thanks uh, for being in the group and you guys are always awesome man thank you just real quick it's spelled w-u-w-e-i <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's, how, that's how you spell it <laughs> But yeah, dude, it's sick to know you guys and shit. Like, Elisha, why don't you That's like fun. use this Probably like opp- yeah. opportunity to kind of plug yourself a little bit? You know, talk a little about about the group. Uh, yeah, man, just come. You know, if you guys want to come check out my YouTube channel, it's Elisha Long. Um, from there, you can join the group if you feel like it. There's there's links in every video. Um, you know, to join the Discord, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Elisha Long WS. So uh, yeah, man, just. Just would love to talk to you guys more and let's get it. It's going to be a See, good For sure. Thank you, Elisha. Happy right. New Year's, everybody. All right. All right. Let's Thanks, run guys. it up. All right, peace. See bye. ya. Bye. bye.